what's up everybody welcome back to another episode of don't give up the ship podcast episode 116 uh and today i'm talking to a mine man that's a thing like <laughs> mns it's a rating in the navy it's a pretty small community and uh also reservists we got into some of uh some of that stuff but particularly interesting to me was like just the story of a mine man was cool it was cool i love learning about obscure navy things that like i didn't get to interact with or be a part of or whatever that i'm not like super familiar with I, like i like learning about it. it's fun uh so that was cool learning about his journey as a mineman and then got out of the navy uh what he did when he came back in as a reservist the leadership interactions um and then what's really cool and interesting to me about reservists is like the the experience and and the wildly varying skill sets you have there because you get somebody that's like a mineman and then he's also like an IT. So they're like more than one thing, which of course they are because they're human beings and we're complicated. But like it's just cool to to understand how it works, but also explore like all of the untapped resources that are in the reservist community. And we talk about that as well. Uh, so it was really, really fun, uh, cool conversation. Um, and, you know, like I, as always, I hope you all enjoy it. Um, so <laughs> I won't belabor the point anymore. Uh, I hope you all enjoy this. Check it out. Hey, real quick. Uh, if you can and you're willing to support us, please do so. We'd really appreciate it. We're trying to expand the platform, trying to pay these bills. Uh, you can go to dgutsapparel.com. That's Don't Give Up the Ship Apparel. Some naval pride and heritage gear you'll actually wear in public. Get shirts, hoodies, uh, shower shoes, drawstring bags, all kinds of cool stuff. Dope stickers like these. You can get logo stickers. We got the enlisted deviant stuff. All kinds of cool stuff. More to come. Working on lots of designs all the time. Uh, we also have the podcast uh, challenge coin. Just came out. I'm really proud of that. And then if you also are willing to and able to, please go to patreon.com slash dgutspodcast. A uh, lot of really cool benefits, tiers, all kinds of cool stuff uh, to try to drive support for the financial side of the platform with there's demands on all all of the things that i want to do to expand cost money all the services and subscriptions and all those things uh and i am trying to turn this thing into a business and a job so that i can do that uh, and devote all my time to providing more content services whatever i can do that helps you out so uh, if you're willing and able please go to dgutsapparel.com you can also go to patreon.com slash podcast and become a member today all right, man. So like we just talked about, we'll start with the bio, just as much detail as you want to provide. I'm sure you've listened to episodes and you know the drill. And then we'll go from there. Cool. Yeah. Uh, name's uh, Evan Wan Buck. Uh, for you for you cats out there, that's my men. Uh, I know that a lot of people don't really meet a whole lot of my men. Yeah, uh, me, in the me world, included. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> really what small, uh, really small it's community. MN. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, uh, so yeah, I originally joined in uh, 2008. Uh, I was going to go be a corpsman um, and they weren't going to set me off for like another three or four months. And yeah. I had just gotten fired from my job as a waiter and I called yeah. my recruiter and I was like, dude, you got to send me this weekend. So yeah, um, they sent me and they were like, you're going air crew. I was like, cool. I don't know what that is, but in boot camp, they always told me it was like the, uh, was it the flight attendants of the Navy? So uh, <laughs> that's not true. Air crew is like the dudes that jump out and rescue swim and stuff. Aren't they? Like I thought air crew. Oh, not, not like... those. There's, oh, yeah, there's two. Different. Yeah. There's two different ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's the cool ones that do the whole <laughs> jumping out, saving people. Yeah, yeah. And there's the ones that just sit in the plane. So, oh, okay. Got um, it. yeah, I was one of those. So I, I, uh, I went through air crew candidate school after boot camp, uh, down in Pensacola, Florida. I mm -hmm. uh, graduated from air crew candidate school, went over to the other side where you have to actually learn how to do your job uh, mm -hmm. from books. And I could not do that. I oh, uh, wow. could not learn that way. And it was all secret. So it was like hard yeah. to take stuff home. Yeah. And hard study, to study. So. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I had a, a pretty cool detailer though. Once I got, once I got out, they're like, you can pick whatever job you want. Like the world is your oyster. So I was like, MA? They're like, no, MA is full. I was like, cool. They gave me <laughs> so any job <laughs> I want that's undermanned, so not any job Yeah, I want? <laughs> pretty much. Not every job, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, I looked. They, they gave me, like, this stack of papers, and they yeah, just, like, yeah. sat there and, like, let me just go through, like, the stack of papers, like, just brief overviews. And, mm. um, I saw this job, Byman, and it was Ingleside, Texas. And I was like, oh, I live in Texas, so, oh. like, yeah, let's do that. And, uh, unfortunately, Ingleside, like, way south Texas. Like, yeah. Like, Christian. Yeah. Yeah. So 
left Pensacola, went to Chicago for some school, and then went down to Ingleside, Texas. Uh, we were the last class to go through that base before they shut it down because of Brian, mm. um, which yeah. is pretty cool. Because like, yeah, I went all to the a school were... at Lackland Air Force Base in the Medina Annex. So like, yeah, like we have very similar yeah. paths. Like I wanted to be a corpsman. And then I had to reclassify in boot camp because they screwed up some paperwork. And then I needed a second drug waiver because they're dumb and they didn't write it down correctly the first time. So then, <laughs> it, yeah, I had only ever cooked, and that's how I ended up as a CS. But yeah, like very similar. Yeah, to initial trajectories. Yeah, yeah speak. I mean, speaking of CS, but I was in, in maps. My recruiter was like, "Do not go CS." Yeah, I well, so <laughs> they kind of did the same thing with me, but like back in the day. I mean, this was two thousand two, so like. Well, I, I went to the reclassifier and boot camp and they showed me some of those printouts, but I couldn't take them with me. So all I had was that. And I don't even know what the blue jacket manual looks like nowadays. I have a bunch of old ones, but like the one I got in boot camp, which I may or may not still have, uh, it just had little paragraphs in it. Like you like literally like three sentences about each job. So I'm like, like in a tiny amount of free time you have, like right before you go to sleep yep. in boot camp, I'm like <laughs> panic reading this shit, trying to figure <laughs> out if like, uh, like what I'm going to do with my life. And, uh, cause I had this big plan to like, I was going to be a corpsman. I wanted to do FMF stuff. And I, you know, that time in the world, I would have been in Iraq or Afghanistan, probably Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, I wanted to like, if I could do the FMF thing and, and deal with whatever came, you know, cause I knew what enough about what was going on in the world that I was probably, gonna, I knew I was probably gonna be getting shot at and stuff. If I went FMF, um, that I was like, okay, and then if I do that, just like every 18 year old, well, I was 19, a 19 year old dude, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a SEAL. If, if, I, but I was realistic about it because I had like uh, Vietnam veteran Marines as uncles that, like, I mean, one of them like had a lot of issues when he came back. Um, my mom's got this crazy story of waking him up for lunch when she was like 14. And she like mm -hmm. shook him when she woke him up and he like wasn't even all the way awake and he's like choking her up against the wall. Cause he thinks oh, wow. Charlie's Jeez. in his tent, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it was like, it was wild. And so like, and, but I talked to those guys about that stuff. And so I, I, like I had heard that story growing up cause my, my uncle died young from, uh, he had a heart attack, but it was, it was, he was, it was a substance abuse thing to cope with what was probably mm -hmm. PTSD before we even knew what that was, you know? Um, so like I had that like cautionary tale and then like the story my mom told me and that's all the same uncle. And then, but then I had like, uh, my un un like, uh, uncle that married my mom's sister. So he was same thing. He was Vietnam, uh, Marine and, uh, my uncle, uh, my other, my mom's other brother, same like Marine of Vietnam. Like, so it was like mm -hmm. a bunch of those dudes I had around me growing up. And so I just kind of saw it and like picked up on it and heard the stories. And so like, I knew just enough to know that there could be consequences. So I'm like, mm -hmm. maybe I try this out and see if yeah. I can deal with like, cause like, I was like, if I end up in combat, like I'm, I want to like, I don't know. Like I, I obviously like I, I have this fear of failure and like, I'm, I feel like most people right. probably do, but you know what I mean? Like I didn't want, I didn't want to suck at it. I wanted to mm -hmm. make sure it wasn't going to like break me and like just destroy yeah. my whole life. And so I was like, let me go do this, see how it goes. And, but then, you know, it all exploded in boot camp because some asshole yeah. MFs <laughs> dorked my paperwork up. Um, so yeah, I got to stop cursing because it's a stupid Riverside thing I use now because it gives me good video, but I don't have the footnotes function so I can go back and edit all the curse words out. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. But that, so then I reclass, I like, so I ended up as an MS because that's how old I am. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's all I'd ever done. I cooked professionally growing up. I loved cooking. I wanted to go back to it when I got out of the Navy. This was just going to be like a four year adventure. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, clearly that one is planned like everything else. But then, yeah. Uh, yeah, I ended up as a cook on submarines instead. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, figure that Works out. out. Though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I don't regret anything at this point. I'm really proud of it. And, I have this like thing about um, like, I like being an underdog or like a, somebody that's like underestimated. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's the story of a CS's life, their whole, yeah. like their whole careers. And it's like, what's funny is like, no one seems to realize it, but us, like I talk to people about it all the time. And um, cause there's times where, like where I'd have like a cob that was like, uh, 
he would get pissed at me and be like, why are you so defensive? All you supply people are so defensive. I'm like, yeah, oh, how could that be? I wonder why, you know, like maybe <laughs> it's because you all treat us like we're stupid. And so I'd snap yeah. at people sometimes. And uh, it was a lot of times it was because they said something dumb. Like, what would you know about it, cookie? Like I'm, I, and I'm like, dude, right. like, yeah. <laughs> really? Like for a smart person, you're pretty, you're pretty dumb. Uh, or yeah. what you said is pretty dumb. And so like, I'd come at people sideways and they'd be like, what? I was just kidding. And it's like, no, you weren't. No, you no. weren't. Not really. Um, like I had this kid that worked for me. He was an FC that uh, would always be like, oh, well, you're not a cook. And I'm like, yeah, but I am though. Like he right. was like, no, but you're, <laughs> I'm saying like, you're just, you're different. Like you're actually smart. And, blah, blah. and I'm like, shut up, dude. Like I'm the same thing as everyone else. You're just yeah. getting to like, know me on a level that, right. you know, like, and I'm not like, delusional about it like i know in certain ways i'm kind of an anomaly and like whatever and that i'm i yeah you know, own analysis i'm not trying to like toot my own horn but i like i know i'm pretty i'm like a super comp competent uh leader so it's like i know mm -hmm. that like i'm kind of an anomaly um but also like i met a bunch of people just like that like my really good mm -hmm. friend sasha that worked for me at the a school she's a surface cs amazing uh, buddy mm -hmm. Ryan, same thing. Surface CS chief. Amazing. So it's like, come on, dude. Like it, it's a pretty brain dead thing to say, but anyway, sorry. I talked way too much there. Now my <laughs> listeners are going to be pissed at me because we're not here to interview me. <laughs> no, it's fine. Hey, it's, I it's talk a lot every dude. single time, right? It's my podcast. Yeah, no, I do what it's, I want. Yeah. it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So yeah, I ended up, uh, and down the Ingle side, went through my mini school. Yeah, all the mm -hmm. closing to the brack, so all the boats were gone, all the yeah. big wigs were gone. So um, we got to pretty much do whatever we wanted down there. And, yeah, uh, they sent me off to San Diego, <laughs> and as soon as I graduated that, to San Diego Sea School, and then mm -hmm. they're like, "You're gonna go meet your your boat over in Bahrain." And uh, minesweepers are extremely yeah. small. I don't know if you've ever seen the minesweeper, but I don't think I've uh, seen one in real life. But yeah, I know they're really small, and I know they have wooden decks. And the end yeah like I yeah don't if, know uh, anything else about them something yeah er, everybody says oh how many wooden ships are there in the navy well mm -hmm. everybody thinks of the constitution well yeah. not really there's also all the minesweepers right because like, magnetic so, lines and stuff or something yeah. right right yep yeah, yeah okay. so <laughs> they were like all right here's the plane ticket and go meet your meet your crew over in bahrain and Yikes. that was probably like my third flight ever in my mm -hmm. entire life. You're flying, flying to the Middle National. East. Yeah. <laughs> 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 flying to the Middle East. Didn't have a passport. I didn't know I needed a yeah. passport. I just had my military ID. I was, yep. I was 19 years old and I was like, all right, man, let's, uh, let's go. So we flew all yeah. over to Bahrain and said, you know, just good luck. You'll find somebody will be there to meet you. Yeah. And I was hopefully. Like, That's very reassuring. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah. walk out of the airport and, uh, yeah, thankfully, you know, two people there, I saw them and I immediately ran over to them. Like, this is my first Help. time in a foreign country. <laughs> Never. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Got through customs. Like, it looked at me weird. I was just like, holding yeah. up my military ID, like praying to God. Like, that's all I need. Please don't arrest me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let me go. Yeah. So, um, got on the ship, first ship, USS Ardent. Um, and, uh, Two days after I got on the ship, they're like, "Hey, you're going cranking." Of I'm course. Like, uh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. uh, they're like, "Oh, we're so sorry, but uh, yeah, yeah, you know, we don't have anybody else we can send. You got to go." Sorry, so. you're brand new, dude. That's what brand new people <laughs> do on ships. Welcome to the Navy. Yeah, I had no idea, and yeah. uh, so it was it was alright at first because you know I was a waiter and it was just like you know you're just waiting on people right having yeah. to do the wardroom stuff the chief's mess stuff and yeah no it's probably really familiar to... honestly like yeah you're yeah. <laughs> just doing that and now you're doing it in the navy <laughs> yep and uh you know like crew gets mad at you give them like the apple tang to make it for them and <laughs> we didn't have soda machines on on the boat yeah so that's all yeah. they got that was the thank the god stuff, I, so. hate... I only had a soda machine once on a submarine and it was fucking ugh, terrible like just because yeah it's messy and stupid and but also like the unseen pain for a guy like me is like the space we have to store food is extremely limited on a submarine mm -hmm. but i have to fill like a hundred square feet with bag and box soda syrup for these like mm -hmm. pre-diabetic like morons <laughs> like i love you guys but still like come on dude like it was <laughs> They're talking about taking away defect fryers. Meanwhile, I'm just loading diabetes onto the ship. Like, I'm like, yeah. what am I? And if I could free up that space, it would just make my life so much less painful. But yeah, yeah. I hate yeah. those things. Yeah, we we didn't have a deep 
deep fryer. Of course. We didn't have a lot of luxuries that a lot of the big ships yeah. have. You know, our, yeah. our hangout spot was the Mestex and mm -hmm. our workout levels on O3 level, a couple weights, and that's about it. Um, yep. Very small yep. boat. Um, so I did that. We went all over, uh, did the cranking. And um, there was this one time we were doing this Ames range where um, they have the boat next to the pier. They pull the brow and you move very slowly up and down the pier to get your magnetic signature. And mm -hmm. uh, being the only crank that wasn't qualified in anything because I had just gotten on the boat, I had to like prepare the meal or help prepare the yeah. meal, clean all the dishes and all that. And we had this Master Chief CS as our SCL. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but he used every single dish in that, ah. in that kitchen. <laughs> and I had some of these dishes I had never even seen before. I was like, yeah, where, where did this come from? that's so funny. Me being the poor, like E4, having to wash every <laughs> single dish, this dude yep. made sandwiches and like, yeah. Yep. So, that's like, dude, yeah, on was, 88s, uh, on 688 submarines, you have to, as the cook, so you have like a scullery. So the cruise dishes, like the, you know, plates and cups and stuff go to the scullery where the FSA is, which is like, it's in the galley. Mm -hmm. It's so small, but then the cook right. has to clean. I have like a deep sink that I clean all my pans in. So it's like, you mm -hmm. become extremely skilled at, at yeah. <laughs> efficiently using like pans, utensils, even like the steam jacket and kettles that you're cooking in. Like you, you get real efficient, like so that you don't yeah. have to clean pans. Yeah, like no, he yeah. he, didn't, he didn't clean one pan. It was yeah, all of course, things. of course. That's why they were all dirty. That was like my point. It was like he's like, oh, yeah. I don't have to clean this because on BNs, yeah, on SSBNs, yeah. like the you just throw them in the scullery, and so you all have this perpetual problem of like there's like this window, like a drop table thing between mm -hmm. the galley and the scullery, and it's just perpetually filled with dishes and pans and stuff from the cooks, and it's like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, I'm like that old guy that walked a hundred miles to school barefoot in the snow. Like, I'm just like, how dare you? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> where I was just like freaking out all the time because not only is it not stowed for sea and, and the FSAs in there just want to blow his brains out because he's got this mouth of dishes, <laughs> but also yeah. like if you had to clean those, there wouldn't be so many damn pans. So just become better yeah. and more efficient at your use yeah. of stuff. This is what people come to yeah. my platform for to hear me talk about the efficient use of dishes. <laughs> well, we, uh, <laughs> I would, I would really hope, I, I would hope that, uh, um, these guys that, that give us their trays, that they actually empty them instead of just like throwing them. Cause we get wet. Try, yeah, I chucking mean, them at it, you. It's, yeah. uh, so we take, we take yeah. the hose, you know, spray them through yep. the window and stuff. So. Oh yeah. You and as well. You should. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Got scrape to your, ourselves. scrape your tray. You clown. Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It was fun times there. Yeah. yeah. So I left, uh, we left Bahrain, went back to San Diego and then went back out to Bahrain for another deployment. Didn't have to yeah. drink anymore. Thank, thank goodness. But yeah. I was kind of, uh, you know, I was that sailor that, uh, complained a lot, um, <laughs> after that experience. Cause I felt like after two days they sent me down there and I just felt like it was like two whole days. You know, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> just like, <laughs> Oh, we, I didn't know what to do. I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, 19 years old, my first Navy ship, you sent me yeah. down to pretty much weight tables and everybody stuff. does and, uh, it bro well Set i know but I'm like pants <laughs> i've seen uh i've seen some ships do wait like six months before they send something yeah down. i mean i do i do like when they give them like a month uh, you know at least a mm -hmm. few weeks but like a month to like check in and like figure out how to get on and off the submarine without getting right. lost yeah 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 i i would have loved that i just kind of you know i was down there for four months and it was just kind of yeah. like kind of sucks so it kind of yeah I was in a bad relationship so all that negativity just continued to fuel my uh, okay fuel my got mind it. through the yeah through the end of the two years yeah two years on the boat i got out um got out of the navy in 2012 and went to civilian route so i mm -hmm. went to school went to college and um had to do that transition was which was pretty rough uh, yeah i didn't really talk a whole lot in taps about yeah <laughs> it's weird getting like, out I, 21 years and then retiring like it's yeah i thought it was just gonna be like sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and i was just mm. gonna run off to this into the sunset start eating weed and like you know <laughs> get a job where i get paid lots of money and like live right my, yeah. live my best life and it's like it's that there are aspects to it that feel like that but then there's a lot of stuff that like yeah it's a lot more difficult than i thought like i was at a doctor's appointment today for the first time with a civilian pcm or whatever uh, and I'm just like mm. such a moron about like, I don't know how to civilian when it comes to like doctors mm -hmm. and stuff. So like, I'm asking the nurse practitioner, like, so, cause I had, can't had neck cancer radiated my face, blah, blah, blah. So like, um, I'm going to, I'm going to have issues with my eyes eventually. Um, right. 
and they've been hurting a little bit recently. And they told me I could get cataracts as early as like my forties and I'm about to turn four. Wow. So, yeah. um, so I'm like, uh Oh, you know, like, so I should go get this checked out. And uh, so I asked him like, how do I like go see an eye doctor as a, like, do I just go to like lens crafters or like, do I have to like <laughs> get a referral from you to go? And they're right. like, you could just go find one or we could refer you. And like, but yeah, it's like, you're not going to like Costco optometry to get your, get your eyes checked out to see if that's right. what's going on. And I was like, all right, cool. Cause I didn't, that's what I would have done. Cause I don't know. Yeah. Like I've never right. had to do this. So like, yeah, it's fucking being a civilian's weird, man. Yeah, I uh, I mean, going through TAPS and the transition, it's just like, oh, you're going to go to school. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. how do I apply to colleges? And yeah, uh, my wife, who I married later on, mm -hmm. um, told me that I was a dummy for the way that I did it because I just went to community college. I didn't know what I was doing. And yeah, I could have yeah. gone to like a four-year university if I had known well, that you yeah. don't have to it's apply a lot. as a brand new student. It's a lot better now. Um, TAPS, yeah. like a lot of – I've – talked to a lot of people that just hated it and like and i'm sure like my experience is probably a little different than in, if i had taken it in norfolk or if i because i took it with like it wasn't like i got to go to a special one as a master chief like i was in the same one as everyone else um mm -hmm. for the most part there was one like the i think the i want to say like the general class was for retirees like the three day or whatever like mm -hmm. the reg just regular tasks and, but then I went to like the college track and the employment track and stuff like that. And it's like, um, it was, I was with like kids that like had like are coming off their first tour getting out. And that some of them I knew, like we took some female enlisted under a submarine and one of them was in my class or a couple of them were in my class. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, yeah, I was talking about like, I'm just like a dude that's like, getting out. and everybody thought I was younger. Cause I guess like, I don't know. I think I look old, but no one else does. <laughs> um, everybody's always shocked that I'm not like like bald and fat i guess i don't know like i don't know what yeah. you with that like i just don't look older i'm like i think i look like i think i look my age but whatever um right yeah they were like uh this one this one student this one student this is completely irrelevant to our conversation but this one student um she's like uh yeah this dude's um, i know this master chief in the class she's like who and she goes hey master chief and i turned around she's like shut up because like i'm clean shaven at the time <laughs> still you know like maybe like a day yeah. of growth uh and i'm like no really and she like she like wanted to see my id card and i'm like oh, what wow. i don't yeah. i don't understand i do look a lot younger without a beard too i have like gray in my beard and stuff but like when i'm clean shaven i do look a lot younger um, oh yeah anyway, anyway so like I, let before we get too deep into you in civilian life and um like per, going into the reserves and everything like what's a day in the life of a mineman on a sh i'm really curious because like i have no idea what you guys do besides what i would assume just like you do like stuff with mines but like i don't like yeah, what do you guys do yeah. on a mine so you're like what's a day in the life of a of like a qualified mineman doing mineman things yeah so uh so we'll we'll talk about mineman overall general um so there's two different I, i'd say two different types of mineman there's the ones mm -hmm. that are on the mine sweepers and the ones that are in the mine shop and usually as okay. a mineman you do one of each uh, mine mm -hmm. shop mine sweep sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get to go out to uh Virginia be part of the Hilo crew out there. Okay. Um, so, uh, on a mine, uh, my men on a minesweeper, you're pretty much the jack of all trades for everything because you have such a small crew of, you yeah. know, maybe like 80, 90 people, you have right. to be able to do everything. So yeah. I was part of the, uh, I was part of the combat, uh, information center mineman. So I was a combat mineman is what they would call us. So we have, uh, those guys that work that do the sonar. So we had mm -hmm. a sonar on the ship that would hunt mines. We also had an MMV, MMV at the time, which was just like this big, like vehicle that's controlled by a joystick okay. that goes oh, yeah, and looks yeah, yeah. and it sees that it's actually a mine uh, in the water. Okay. Um, and then you have the guys like the OSs, which are mm -hmm. mine OSs that do the charts, do all the message traffic, everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I did. So okay. uh, I did a lot of the charting, a lot of the the message traffic, and then you know a lot of my peers in that in that shop did the the sonar stuff and did the MMB stuff. So you do the maintenance mm. on that as well. So okay, um, for that, that's typically at least a comment. Myman, there's also the deck. Myman did a lot of the painting, the, you know, scraping of the, the stuff on the, on the folks hole and stuff like that. So, like, is so, everybody on this thing a Myman then pretty much or? Uh, the majority of the crew. Yeah. Myman, we do, we had okay. one foreman, one IDC. Um, mm. we had a couple CSs, maybe three or four CSs. Yeah. We had like an LS, we had a PS, a YN. Mm. And then so kind of um, like an LCS, rates. but like because yeah. of the mission and mostly mine men. 
Yeah, mostly my okay. men. So um, they would rotate us through, uh, you know, combat, deck, things like that, just get our experience up. And um, to be honest, we hardly ever went underway. So <laughs> it was uh, yeah. in the longest, we, we couldn't really go a whole long, uh, long time just based on how the ship is. But yeah, um, you know, we, we did a couple underways. So it was pretty cool to see out there actually lay out sweeps and, and, yeah. and do stuff like that. So yeah, I was going to say, I bet I would imagine like, be, unless you're doing mission specific things for real, like you'd just be doing it for like training, quals, proficiency yep. type thing. And then yep. staying parked until yep. somebody needs a mind sweeper. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know it's, uh, you, what kind of missions. Been a while. <laughs> yeah. What kind of missions do they do? Like, I mean, I, it's just mind clearing, I'm assuming. Right. Or are they yep. laying mines yeah. or. Uh, no, we're just, we're just clearing, clearing them. Um, okay. If you were, if you were part of the, the mine shop, so building the mine, actual mines, yeah. you would actually usually hand those off to the air force and the air force would go drop them. Um, oh, they like the airdrop them? Our, yeah. They can airdrop Ew. them. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So our job on a sweep was just mine clearance. And so a lot of our training and stuff like that was geared towards mine clearance, Clearing, ensuring yeah. all of our stuff works. Yeah. Okay. Being the first ones out there. Um, yeah. So Do you guys complete. get like, like, cause I don't know what exactly goes into clearing. Is it like, are you doing like EOD things almost where you're like diffusing them or are you just clear, yeah, like have, setting uh, them off like so that they're not a threat anymore? Or like, yeah, we, we, uh, so we usually did have EOD depending okay. on the type of mine we would, uh, we're able to drop stuff, you know, near it or explode it at a okay. safe distance, blow it up. Got it. So, yep. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Do you ever get to blow up a mine? Yeah. We did. We, we had to do nice. a lot of, uh, what did they call structural testing? And so they, they okay. would do that. We'd go out there and they would, they would blow something up and you'd feel it in the ship. That's you know, cool. The, the rumble and <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You, if you look online, you'll see like the big pictures of like the big thing blowing up and mine's yeah. in the background, the small ship. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. I've seen stuff get like, where they like intentionally torpedo ship to like make an artificial reef or whatever. And those are pretty cool videos. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right, we can get back yes. to like let's pick up back on the timeline. Sorry, I just I wanted to on get. The, like, I was, I'm really curious, like, because I, I I don't think I've ever met a mineman before. If I did, yeah. I didn't know. I it, mean, so. I mean, not a lot of people know. I I was at a I did a reserve last year, and I was uh, I was on base, and I went to the medical uh, just for like my PHA stuff, and he mm. was like. I was like, my man, hell is like, I'm like, no, I'm like, no, I'm like, my man, like, she's like, I've never heard of that. Yeah. I, like, I mean, I've heard of it. There. Yeah. But I don't, th yeah. I really don't think I've ever met one in real life. Cause that was yeah. where my head was going was the, this dude, uh, David, he's a chief now, might be a senior. I think he might have made a senior chief. Um, but yeah, he's at the MR that I was like, in my mind, I'm just like, it's another obscure rate that starts with an M. Yep. I'm like, ah, maybe, I don't know. Like, but yeah, I, I don't think I've ever met a mineman. And again, if like, I may have randomly in like chief season events or some random where there's like just a ton of random cross section of the Navy, mm -hmm. but I didn't know it, you know, like, or at like senior enlisted That's Academy, maybe, but yeah. Yeah, really small. We only, we only have a few places that we can actually go. Um, yeah. Japan, Bahrain, San Diego. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. So, um, at least that's the time out? I was in now. Why'd you get out? Yeah. What was the motivation yeah. to pick up there? Yeah. Part of it was, uh, I was in the Negro relationship. So I'm like, oh, I'll go home. Okay. And, you know, and I'm pretty sure I upset a lot of people at my command with my negative attitude and yeah, um, just, Dude, just like, I, man, I, I hate it here. And I was that guy too. Like I was yeah. the angriest, most bitter second class ever. And then went to shore duty and I had a chief there that read me like a book and put me in charge of people. And then all of a sudden I was like ironing, right. increasing my utilities and shining my shoes. So there you go. And yeah. the rest is history. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't get that. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, maybe yeah. maybe at the time I could have done better and been more happier. But I mean, yeah, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Right. You're not mature years, enough. It's just like, yeah, you're not yeah. mature enough to to. And it's like you don't even realize the amount of stress you were under and like the how ill-equipped you were to deal mm -hmm. with that. Let alone the people that are then in because then it's like. 3d chess so then you're like peeling back the layers and it's like these leaders don't know what the hell they're doing either and they're poorly equipped to deal with your needs let alone their own needs yeah and so there it's mm -hmm. just it's a dumpster fire but you don't have any of that perspective at the time so of course you were right. that guy like every almost everyone deals with it that way it's just some yeah. of us it's like the eps 
are just like eating a lot of that and and find a way to be high functioning and probably mm-hmm. get like head and neck cancer when they're older and burn out really hard. <laughs> and then yeah. like I wasn't always an EP, but then like the other guys who are maybe like P's or like MPs perpetually, it's like, they're that they're like, they can't. And I was con- I was a lot of both. Like the first four, five years I was, I was never mm-hmm. better than an MP cause I did my job really well, but I was really vocal about how much I hated the Navy yeah. <laughs> and wanted to get out of here at my first opportunity. And like, yeah, yeah it was. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's just and maturity I think, and context. Yeah, I think the, uh, back then, so like I said, the, the Minesweepers actually moved from Ingleside to San Diego, and it was still early in that it's process. So in Ingleside, you're away from... Yeah, you're being, isolated. Yeah. yeah, you're isolated, and like the pe- people are going to look at Ingleside like, I'm not going to go to Ingleside, Texas. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go yeah. to like San Diego or right. Norfolk or somewhere somewhere like cooler where there's a lot more concentration. And, yeah. and so we had a lot of the same like leaders and leader ideas because it's the same yeah. same people just echo chamber yeah motor. just going back yeah. and forth yeah i think it's a lot better now but um when i when i got out because of that um just thought everything's gonna be so much better when i got home yeah um and like i had three months off of not doing anything and mm-hmm. didn't, had to wait for school to start up so i was just like playing video games like yep. 2 a.m in the morning yeah i've been like... doing that for six months <laughs> and i'm yeah. still like trying to figure out what to do with my hands yeah. yeah, it's like, I, I didn't know what to do. And I was like, oh, yeah. this getting out will fix this relationship. And no, yep. it didn't. And no. it just made things worse. And so you have to like, I left when I was 18. And I didn't really know a whole lot of people before I left. And coming back, you're like by yourself. Yeah, it's just like, what do yep. I do? How do I meet people? How do I that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of me right now, dude, after 21 yeah. years, like, because I was never, yeah. I was never the guy that especially after I made chief, like, so and it might've been because of this, like I made chief pretty young. So like I'm 28 and they're like all in their thirties with married with kids and I'm living in a one bedroom Mm -hmm. apartment. Like I'm an E five. And so like, it was really lonely, like being in that position. Cause like, I'm not allowed to like fraternize. So like, but I'm like, who am I supposed to be friends with? Cause I don't want to hang out with these dudes. Like I just, they're all like 10 years older than me and like one and a half kids. And, what are we going to do? Like go to Costco on Saturday? Like I'm just yeah. like, no, dude, like <laughs> we're going to move on. And <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was really weird. And I was like living with a couple first classes when I was, cause I was on mm-hmm. the same boat and then they kept me there. So like, um, I was living with a couple first classes. So I had to like move into this one bedroom apartment when I made chief. Cause they didn't, they weren't even eligible yet. And like, right. It was, it was, and so it got really isolating. So like I, and I, and I still kind of maintained like a working relationship friendly wise with those guys, but like I couldn't hang out with them anymore. And then it got weird later. Cause then I started to get like, not depressed, but like, it's, it was like, I didn't have any friends. So then I was like, mm-hmm. I started to hang out with some people I'm technically not supposed to. Cause I'm just like, what, I, what am I supposed to do? Like, right, this is ridiculous. Right, yeah. And it's like. I, 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 and I was towards the end of my time there. So like, it was a gray area. Like, should I have been doing it? Probably not. Like, I mean, technically not for sure, but like, it wasn't affecting anything. Like I wasn't sitting in a ranking board, like advocating for the homies. So it's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. we, uh, we, uh, yeah, did that, got out, went to school, uh, did that work through that transition, had to go out and yeah. meet friends and be like, this is how you're supposed to be friends. And, um, this is how you're, you know, going to school, you're like, you're 22 years old and you're going to school with like 18 year olds, like the Billy Madison meme where, you know, yeah, you're that was up in the, in the class. That was me recently. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I didn't really like school. So I started working in it. Um, started taking it courses and that's where I started. My civilian career was in it stuff. So started doing that for a couple of years and uh hang on a second you know, man it, my dog is losing yeah, sure. his shit right now and it's fucking killing me in my dog's defense it was girl scouts delivering girl scout cookies that i ordered so <laughs> i might just be eating girl scout cookies while you talk that's fine kind of kind of <laughs> jealous on that so <laughs> yeah so i uh worked in it and uh you know, in TAPS class, they, they were like, oh, the reserves will call you, leave, leave your number. And I left my number and nobody called me. And then of course. Like, th- three years, three years later, I just had this inkling. I was like, man, I feel like I'm not like doing everything I could. And I have that itch to like actually be more than I can be. Right. And, uh, 
you know, they call me and I was like, oh, wow. They're like, are you interested in coming back? We'll give you a signing bonus and you can be in the reserves and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, cool. That's, that's awesome. So, um, I knew a couple, couple people, um, in the reserves at the unit that I wanted to go to. So I ended up getting back in, going to a Mo Mau community and it was, it was pretty sweet. We got to go to what is that? Here. Mo Mo Mau? What is that? Yeah. Mo Mau. So it's like, uh, it's the mobile mine uh, shops. So we would fly over to Guam and to that mine shop over there and we'd help build mines with them, interact with them and be able to do all the stuff with them. So gotcha. uh, it was, man, it was, it was awesome. Like one week in a month. Yeah. And then like two weeks, two, three weeks out of the year, I'm going to Guam and like, sorry, work, you know, I'm, I gotta go do my Navy <laughs> duty. It's going to yeah. suck. And I'm going to the not island a, country and <laughs> not a bad place to go. Like Guam, no, it's like no. smaller, and more humid, but it's like, it's Hawaii essentially like yeah, much smaller, probably like more tropical and super humid, but it's like mm -hmm. beautiful and weather's insane. You can go down to the beach and paddleboard. Like it's a not bad <laughs> place to get paid to go hang out for three weeks. Yeah. And so I, uh, you, you get to fly civilian over there, which is really cool. So you fly like United all the way over there and, and then like I golf. Like on the weekends, I just go play in the golf course. So there was absolutely beautiful courses yeah. and, uh, you know, come back and be like, man, that work trip was so hard. The Navy trip, you know, <laughs> <laughs> John's like, oh, it's gotta be really hard. I'm like, yep. Difficult, man. So totally. It's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I was part of Mo Mau and I had this really cool, uh, warrant officer cause uh, for those communities, there's just a warrant officer as your CEO and, you know, he really took me under his wing and like gave me a bunch of stuff. He's like, I want you to do this, 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 I see, he saw the potential that I didn't see. And, uh, so that I just really took off there and, uh, got to the top where you know, we're a small unit, maybe like eight, 10 people local and, uh, you're going up against one other first class. And so I'd get the EP every year. And it's just kind of like, <laughs> I feel like I'm at the top where I can't really, I don't feel like I'm going anywhere. Like I'm still yeah. here, just not sure. I'm getting EP every year, but. Um, I have a master chief mentor, part of the LCS community. He called me he's like, Hey, I know your orders are coming up. I want you to come over here cause you need first classes. So I did that and I went and joined him and we're at unit with, uh, Mayport, Florida, Jackson. Okay. Well, and so what are you doing down there? Yeah. So I'm part of the, the LCS run two community. So, uh, right now I'm the command LPO. Uh, I'm also okay. the uh, public affairs officer for the entire enterprise. So I get to write up a lot of the. Okay. So you're working or... with LCSs doing, um, as the command LPO and all the, like, so you're not, um, with minesweepers and stuff. No, no, we're with, okay. we're with the LCS. so we support the LCSs. Yeah. We'll, we'll send people on there, um, every weekend, every drill weekend and, uh, doing our ATs our two weeks, yeah. three weeks out of the year. We're attached to a an LCS and they're just like, yeah. Hey, do this, do this, and this. And for, for my men, it's a little bit rough because they, uh, they don't really have all the, the stuff that we need yet to do our job there. So we're kind of yeah. with the uh, BMs and yeah, which is cool. It's still that experience as a reservist <laughs> you get to go on a ship. And mm -hmm. if you don't have your East was or anything like that, you're able to go get that as a reserve. Oh, that's cool. It's huge. Cause there's, there's people that uh, are just strict reserves, never been on a ship and now they get mm -hmm. to be on a ship and go get their East was, even though it takes like, you know, six months to a year, we've had right. people do that, which is really that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, no, that's cool. What, yeah. um, what do you do in the civilian world when you're not playing Navy? Like what's, uh, cause you're not full time. I'm assuming unless you're on like uh, yeah. active duty orders or something. Yeah. So I, I'm a senior network engineer for a plastic okay, yeah, company IT out stuff of California. Yeah. Nice. IT stuff. Yeah. Are you, so, so you're doing it remotely um, from Florida or are you, do you live in California? No, I live, I live in Texas. I live in Dallas. So, oh, okay. Um, Never mind. yeah, go Cowboys. But, uh, Ooh, um, I'm a lion. Oh yeah. It is, really it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah. What it so is. no, I, they, I fly out to, I fly out to Mayport every month and, uh, mm -hmm. do my drills with them and then nice. do my ATs with them. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So the, how does this is just random. Like, but like, so you said that the company's out of California. Do they just have an office in Dallas? Yeah, they have, they have offices okay. uh, all over the U S yeah. So, um, gotcha. sometimes out of the year I'll like, I'll be in, uh, I'll be in LA next month, um, for a week. So, um, gotcha. good luck. Yeah, it's cool. Make it. yeah. It's like Mad Max out there. <laughs> for, so I hear yeah, on <laughs> YouTube. 
No, I, I mean, I've, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a different beast and it's, it's way, yeah. I hope nobody takes offense to this, but it's really dirty out there. At least the air is like the smog that's, and stuff like yeah, that. That's so. what I've heard is like, yeah, I mean, not the air quality, the, there's a giant, the giant homeless problem and like, and I'm sure yeah. a lot of this stuff, I would think a lot of it's isolated to downtown LA, but like I live in like a small town in Washington and it's like, it's gotten way worse in the last year and a half mm -hmm. like crime is way up like i had some clown come drill a hole in the gas tank of my truck to drain the gas out of it <laughs> and so i had to pay i mean i paid the deductible of 500 bucks but i mean it was like so it cost me 500 dollars for a 70 dollars tank of gas so that was sweet i just yeah. filled it up and then uh because this isn't even my daily driver i had i drive like a little hybrid car thing because when i was commuting right. base it was far enough away that it saved me a ton of money on gas and I have a yeah. truck just so I have like a four wheel drive and go get dirt or wood or whatever. So like, uh, yeah, it drills a hole in it. So I can take it in and pay the deductible, but like, it's like 1200 bucks. The truck, it's an older truck. So like they didn't even mm -hmm. make the gas tank anymore. They had to go like find a used one and 3d print like, one. Bro, I would have given you a hundred bucks to go away and not drill a it's hole. more in trouble. Yeah. Tank. But then they would just and, come yeah. back the next day for another hundred. Yeah. Know, it's just I mean, it's I, so stupid. I assume that takes a while though, right? Just to drill a hole in the gas I, tank. And not only that, but like, <laughs> I didn't realize, like my dad explained it to me because he's kind of a car guy. And he's like explaining to me like how it's not as dangerous as you would think it is because <sighs> something about like the way they make the gas tank. So it's like, there's no oxygen for it to ignite. So if you're drilling and there's friction and heat and whatever, I mean, in my mind, I'm like drilling into a gas tank sounds like the worst idea ever. Yeah. Cause I'm just thinking <laughs> of like friction makes heat metal on metal sparks. Oh my oh, God. Man. But apparently I watched too many movies because you need oxygen there present with the spark. Cause of course you do fire yeah. tetrahedron or whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was like this sound, that just sounds like a terrible plan. But then also just like, why, dude? Like, and it's not like I don't live in like a Gucci gated neighborhood, man. I live in a blue collar mm -hmm. neighborhood. I'm like, I, I don't have nice cars. I mean, they're not, they're not yeah. crappy cars. Yeah. You know I mean, but like, it's not like I got a Tesla parked in my, in the driveway of my right. 5,000 square foot house. Like, like Jesus go somewhere else, dude. Like, come on. But yeah, the, yeah, and it's just a bunch of crazy stuff. Like all these meth heads trying to like rob the, my wife works at a coffee stand and, they tried to break in one day and then there's another day where they tried to like, I don't know what it, the guy was trying to do. He's probably just out of his mind high, but like mm -hmm. they two girls were closing and they um, were going to their cars and the dude like just accosted them, just came at them. And so they got scared, both jumped in one girl's car, tried to leave the parking lot. And he's trying to like block them in and stuff. I'm like, what oh, is man. And this stuff never happened before. Like, yeah. it's just yeah. this area. Cause we live near a Naval shipyard. So it's like, there's a oh, bunch yeah. of just like, veterans and navy people because there's an, a couple of navy bases nearby i'm puget sound right mm -hmm. so like right the uh and then um there's a naval shipyard right there in bremerton so it's like there's mm -hmm. just that's pretty much all that's here is just like navy people and mostly yeah. shipyard workers where i live and so i'm just like it was a chill quiet area like yeah nice like i bought the house and 2016 but yeah crime is way up it's so weird and it's like then there's a ton of like homeless people and just vagrants like all over the place that were never here before and i'm like oh where, wow. where'd you come from like yeah. i don't understand <laughs> how'd you get here <laughs> yeah. yeah way up are you frozen what happened are you back yeah the, okay the, there's a little glitch there for in the matrix for a second yeah it's weird <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, it's so weird, but also like, you know, I, our goal is to move, like we wanted to move to Texas, ironically, like that we went down yeah. to Austin when I retired and checked, we wanted Not to be there. like, out. no, 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 no. <laughs> we went to Austin, uh, specifically, like I wanted to be about an hour outside Austin. I wanted it to be like right. here where it's like, if I want to go to Seattle for something, I just got to go visit. Um, right. but I don't really ever go to Seattle. And it's mm -hmm. like Austin. It's like, yeah, I, I'm, I do jujitsu. I'm into combat sports. So like, if I want to go watch, like, there's a lot of world class jujitsu in Austin because Joe Rogan primarily, but also just right. like, that's where they are. So like, yeah. um, they do a lot of like high level competitions. It would be really cool to go watch people compete. So like, 
I'd drive to Austin to watch that and then go home, like to somewhere yeah. like 45 minutes an hour away. Like that's what I, w- I wanted. But then it just like, it didn't work out. And it was right as like mortgage interest rates were getting weird and um, yeah. home prices and inflation were getting weird. And so it just like our cost of living here is comically low because I bought the yeah. house in 2016. And yeah. because, oh, wow. Other- yeah. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. Like my my home value has more than doubled. And so it's like for yep. me to sell this and then go buy a place down. And we were going to rent when we got down there too. And like rent is sky oh, wow. high. Yeah. So we're going to rent yep. for like six months, learn the area, and then try to buy a house. And it's like the worst time to do all those things. <laughs> and so I'm just yep. like, yeah. If I had some high paying job, maybe. But like I, my plan was to go down there just on pension and disability and like go down there and start a new life. And like, so I there'd be a job presumably eventually. But like, yeah, yeah the cost of living would have like fucking doubled, dude. It would have been nuts. So, yeah, Austin's, unfortunately, Austin's uh, weird. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Sure. It's expensive. There's yeah, there's cool parts to it, but I wouldn't want to live there. It very much. It was like right. a cooler, warmer Seattle. Like I don't want to live there, but there's some cool stuff to do there. So like I want to be within striking distance because there's a lot of really cool things there. But yeah, I don't. I don't want to live in Austin. Yeah. Absolutely not. For the same reason, I don't want to live in Seattle. Like you know, it's right. a big city, yeah. but also I want. I want 20 acres in the middle of nowhere. But yeah. Everybody and their moms Someday. moved there, and it's just, it's the same with Dallas too. It's like is it we when we bought our house, we're like, oh, we're in this nice area, mm-hmm. not a lot, whole whole lot of stuff. There's some land, farms around, and just like yeah, now, it's just like Dallas is just like expanding. Like they're, yeah, they moved Toyota here, Samsung, and they yeah. opened up a Walt Disney World resort for kids over in, in Frisco. So in Texas, yeah, in Texas. Holy so. crap! I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, wow. open first go just for kids, but um, yeah, yeah, it's it's wild, but yeah, you go to Montana, I, I moved back dude. here. Yeah, that's where everybody that's, watch Yellowstone. And just yeah, move out the well, <laughs> I was looking at Montana already because I have a buddy that owns a bunch of land out there. Um, yeah, and just talked about how nice and I like. I want to go somewhere where there's not a lot of people, like Wyoming or something. Right. Like I just want right. to be somewhere where there's not a lot of people. Beautiful wilderness. Like I can get 20 acres in the middle of nowhere. And I I don't mind the snow either. I would go home to Michigan uh, if it wasn't Michigan, but um, (laughs) yeah, I mean, I would go just because the cost of living is a joke and in rural Michigan, it's like, it's not like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to get into politics, but like, it's not, it's not the state itself is not my favorite. Um, Yeah. But yeah. The rural areas are fine because my brother lives in like a farm town in Michigan and um, mm-hmm. it's amazing there. So like I could see myself buying property up there and, and I'm cool with the snow, but my wife is not. So it's like oh, yeah, if, it got worse than, if it got worse than Washington, I'd be in trouble. So I don't, I don't know that Montana is ever going to happen or like somewhere like Montana is ever going to happen. But maybe. yeah, my uh, my wife. Um, Born and born and raised in Texas, and I yeah. was born in Chicago. So I I love the snow. Oh, yeah. I used to work. So you know a, what's up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to work at a company in Boulder, Colorado, and I absolutely loved going there. Mm-hmm. And just yeah. snow, the beautiful weather, and just like at least if you're stuck in traffic, you got the mountains to look at, right? Not like right, in Texas, right. where it's just cement. So yeah, <laughs> it's just flat. Yeah. And people yeah. drive like psychos, by the way. At least in the Austin in Dallas, area, yeah. Like oh, in, yeah. in yeah, Austin, yeah, Austin huh. The freeway is terrifying. Like, and then just like, yeah, just driving around. It's like you're never going fast enough. Everybody's NASCARing around you. And like, dude, I yeah. like, there's not a lot of places I've liked driving less than there. But like, I had a buddy that lives down there now. He's a retired chief. Um, and he's, he's saying it's the worst place ever. And he like lived in LA and stuff. And I'm like, shut your mouth. It's yeah. like worse than that. I'm, I mean, like, they're all moving to Austin. So. Well, you're not wrong. So like, <laughs> like the, like driving across the George Washington bridge in New York city is probably the most terrifying traffic experience I've ever had. Cause it's like, and this is just the way I remember it. It's been a long time, but it was like 20,000 lanes all merging down into like five yeah. and there's no like rhyme or reason to it at all. It's just like, like. Uh, the Hunger Games, like figure it out, yeah. like whoever makes it makes it, you know, yeah. like. Um, but yeah, it's like that. That and then I drove in bumper to bumper traffic in LA, and like, ugh, like right. no, yeah. it's way worse. But I hated driving around. Austin. That was yeah. horrific. When we got outside the yeah. city, it wasn't bad because we went to some other places outside of Austin, and it wasn't so yeah, bad. Yeah, the hill country is really nice. It's it's absolutely yeah. beautiful, and yeah. so. 
I think a lot of people figured it out from California. Right. <laughs> so and they're all moving down there. Yeah. Ruined it for everybody. Before. <laughs> yeah. So they're saying about like Idaho and a bunch of other places too that are like really nice. Oh, really? And people are finding out and moving from California because they hate it and then trying to make it California, which I don't know if the second part's true. I feel like if you picked up your whole life and tried to move to like moved out of an area because of how horrific it got. I would like to think that most of those people would know why it got it's like, okay, well this didn't work. So let's not do like, I'm leaving this place cause I don't like how this turned out. So maybe mm -hmm. I need to adjust my wor world view a little bit. And I think a lot yeah. of those people, cause people like to blame it on like, like uh, Democrats or whatever. And it's like, I don't think it's that at all. Like there's, mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. people like to try to pretend it's like, and I, again, I don't want to like go down a political rabbit hole, but it's not like, <laughs> it's, it's like leadership, man. It's like a weird pivot. It's like leadership I'm trying to get me out myself out of this political rant. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's so nuanced that it's, but it's like, people aren't willing to, to explore or discuss that anymore. You know what I mean? Like right. It's really yeah. complicated and really nuanced, but we, oh, so we don't, ain't nobody ways. got time for that. We got to just talk about like, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. It's like, yeah. I, it cracks yeah. me up, dude. I watch like, um, I watch this thing called breaking points on YouTube. It's like a news channel that one, the dude's a Republican and the, the, uh, woman, like there's two people. So like one of the anchors is a, he's like a late twenties, early thirties, uh, dude, he's a of Indian descent and is conservative, I should say. Like he's the more mm. Republican one, and then she's a Democrat, more liberal. She's older. Uh, she's like forty or something. But they do this show together, and it's really cool because they have like what you would think would be conflicting viewpoints, but it's re it's really cool the way they discuss everything. They're like, look, yeah. grown ups can have a conversation on yeah. on like two <laughs> different ends of the spectrum, and like not kill each other and they're like really good friends and do a bunch of stuff together um but i was watching that and they were um i think i just i think i just hard reset um what was i gonna say <laughs> i got distracted or it was i think oh it was like i'm what they're taught they keep talking about all this stuff going on in politics and how like they make excuses for everything and everybody's blaming each other for everything it's like it's like what you would hear if a kindergarten teacher was describing their day like Mm -hmm. Well, Timmy didn't want to give the T-Rex to Tommy. And then they like punched one of them, punched the other one in the ear and then started bleeding. And then they both blamed each other and nobody would tell me what happened. And it's everyone's fault. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's like yeah. you, you wonder why leadership and competence is rampant in the military. Look at our civilian leadership. Right. Like, it's like everything you see is just like, it's like a bunch of like eight year olds are in charge. Like it's so yeah. ridiculous. So like, yeah, and yeah it's just, I mean, it's, ugh. it's just something that keeps, uh, keeps going. Like it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's never changing. So one person takes over and has that mindset and they're yeah. in charge of five other people. And those, you know, you, you get that in the room, those, you know, yeah. three of those five are going to have the same thought process and well, yeah. way to, I think the job like attracts those types of people too. Like, and then they think that's the move. Cause that's what they see all the other political animals right. doing. But, yeah. um, what's, uh, so let's get to the leadership stuff, man. Like what is, I'm curious, like what, like what's your leadership experience been both as one, uh, cause you are one. And then uh, like on the receiving end of leadership in the reserves, I'm curious about like, um, like how it differs and what's been your experience with it as a mindman, like, cause it's, that's kind of a unique path in and of itself. Yeah. Like we talked about really, really small and yeah. uh, you get, you, you get the same, at least when I was in a while ago, and it's probably different now on my yeah. that um, you get, you know, you get the same people. You don't, you didn't get big Navy people. And even yeah. if you did, you had a lot of the uh, lower level leaders that were like, no, it doesn't work like that here. This is how it works. <laughs> this is not the big Navy. This is, this is mine sweep Navy. Yeah. It's a small ship Navy. And so they come in and try to hard charge and, uh, you know, they, they get shut down pretty quick. And yeah. that's how I watched that happen. And, mm -hmm. uh, when I was in like active duty, at least, you know, I did not take advantage of like a lot of the opportunities that probably was given. I didn't see it. I wasn't mature yeah. enough to look at it. And that's just, you know, being young and being stupid and thinking that, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but 
reserves has really opened up my eyes because not only did I get the experience of civilian world leadership, but I also now I get the reserve world leadership. And I've yeah, had I've some heard really that good a lot. leaders in that. Yeah. Like how I've, I've get... Go ahead, sorry. Oh no, no, go, go, go I'm gonna it. get eaten alive for the number of times I've interrupted you. Um <laughs> <laughs> the uh like I've heard a lot like the how like I think a lot of active duty people um that do the career as active duty, whether it's four years or, or thirty, it's like we view um like reservists as like, ah, yeah, you don't know what the real Navy's like, or you're like, they're not as competent or as, um, right. don't have the same experience and everything else. But then I've heard a lot from reservists. It's like, or especially like a couple of people who were active duty and then went reserves where they're like, oh no, it's totally different because they're normal people. So it's like, yeah. they have access to training and education and experiences and, yep. and that you don't. And then they come here and apply that to a military environment. They're not only doing the military thing and mm -hmm. military, like active duty military people largely don't have time to pursue this or, or aren't pursuing it for the professional reasons that like somebody like you were talking before we recorded about the, your, uh, I think a buddy of yours had, that has an MBA. It's like, mm -hmm. you don't, it's not that like some military people don't pursue education while they're on active duty end up with like higher level degrees. Like I know a bunch of people that have gotten master's degrees on active duty, but like, I wouldn't say it's common. I would say like it, like it happens enough that I can name some people, you know, but it's like a small right. percentage. It's probably like 5%, 10%, yep. maybe if I'm being generous. So it's like, you don't have that largely across the Navy in the same way because we're busy doing the damn thing. So it's like in the, in the reserves world, it's like, yeah, you have all of these, really like interesting and like like the possibilities are really wild where it's like you could get somebody that's like i don't know like a ceo of a major company that's like a reserve officer that comes in to mm -hmm. do their reserve things and it, like tulsi gabbard's a reserve lieutenant colonel in the army or something like she ran for right. president so it's like the wildly varying cross-section of humans that you get like you wouldn't have access to somebody like her ever Right. Unless you're yeah. Joe Rogan, you know, or like one yeah. of those types of people, <laughs> it's like you would never have access to her. But then, what if she just comes in to do her drill weekend, and here comes the? And yeah. it's like that's that's cool. And like, there's I'm sure there's a lot of other people like that out there with like really interesting experience and knowledge and education and specialization and whatever. Where it's mm -hmm. like you're I. I bet you, you guys' leadership aptitudes probably higher. If you, if we yeah. aggregated it, like we found a bunch of data, aggregated it all and compared it, I bet you leadership competence generally would be higher in the reserves. Now, when you get into like, like strategic and tactical, like application of the mission stuff, blah, 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 that, mm -hmm. and I don't even think that's the same thing. It Like it is and it isn't. Um, yeah, it's going to be higher in the Navy. It's more pro like proficiency almost because we're doing it all the time. You know what I mean? And we're mm -hmm. immersed yep. in that and very focused on that. And Navy leadership is, is I would call it their, their primary focus is um, like the technical stuff, like tactical, like how do we right. apply it? Like how do we fight the ship? How do we apply these weapon systems? How do we, how do we do all these things uh, in the most like, hyper efficient way to win you know or accomplish a mm -hmm. mission or whatever and less time spent on like the actual le like leadership principles and soft skills and blah 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 so it's like yeah, yeah servant I, leadership I you, yeah yeah i bet you when we're talking about just just leadership as as its own competency you're i bet you the reserves leadership uh competency is much higher if it was ever measured yeah, I mean, I I've gotten to work with some really great people, really smart yeah. people, and you get your people, normal people that are just sure. like the paycheck, you know. Yeah, hey, you're always going to get chuckleheads, man, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. We, we got we got people like we some officers are like lawyers and stuff like that on the outside, yeah. and like mm -hmm. how do we utilize those skills in our unit? And um, you have people like me, like I I work as a senior network engineer, and I got my degree mm -hmm. in organizational leadership. Um, yeah, that's something I like a lot and I've been around some really good, great companies, with really good culture and mm -hmm. just being able to come over to the regular military and just be like, okay, how do I apply this here? How do I yeah. make the culture not, I mean, you get in your face and yell in your face. How can I get right. the most out of you? 
yeah. um, by not having to do that. Right. So, well, and, and like as elementary as it, as it seems to a non active duty military person, you can't do that. <laughs> like if you yeah. did that as a civilian, you'd get fired. Like they'd be an right, HR yeah. going, Nobody's you won't believe yeah. what he just said to me. Yeah. You know, like you can't do Curse that. Words and, and... <laughs> yeah. Like you can, it's so radically different. And like the military is definitely like in the 20 years I was 21 years I was there, it started to like the, sh the giant bureaucracy started to lean more that way. Where like some of the mm. stuff you used to do, you can't do anymore, but like you can still right. light someone up. Yeah. I mean, like it's still wildly different than the civilian sector where you just can't do that anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and I would love uh, something that our unit did was, all right, everybody write down what your job is in the civilian world. And mm. they're going to look at it and say, okay, this person's really good at, you know, writing, or this person's really good at doing this type of work. And like, how do we, how do we bring that over to our, our sides to make our really, really well, um, right. our unit really well. And, you know, I'm a senior chief now, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's like, I want to bring some of these yeah. leadership principles that you're learning in civilian world that you've learned yeah. and like all these other smart people that have come through, even though we're weekend warriors, as a lot of people say, and sure, I may not yeah. know how to do your job as much, but you know, at the end I of the know day, a I lot more about this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's dude, I bet you. And that's something I've said for a long time too, for like the Enlick ELD stuff. And like, I got the, the CMC of, of Enlick as a, as a dude, I know that I'm trying to get on a podcast, Toby, I'm looking at you. Um, <laughs> I, we've talked, he said, yes, he's just like, it's, he's a hard dude to pin down schedule wise. Um, yeah. and I, and I need to follow up too. I haven't done that. So it's like part like 50 50 fault wise but he's a, he's somebody i want to talk to about that kind of stuff because like it seems it seems like granted i've been out for a little while but like covid kind of ate the rollout of that like they were talking about like we're gonna have these mm -hmm. detachments everywhere manned by sailors and then right. then you can't that detachment is kind of like the quarterback that they're gonna go around and and qualify all these facilitators that are at these shore commands and they're going to facilitate all these ELD classes. And then like COVID just like, like <laughs> everything right, stopped. Yeah. Nobody was even yep. talking about it. Um, but then I just got an email from a CMC buddy of mine the other day. He's like a flag. Well, he's about to be at a flag command. Um, talking about how they're making some of the ELD stuff mandatory soon and all this other stuff, which it's like, it's good if the infrastructure is there to support the throughput required to make it mandatory. But mm -hmm. if we're just making it mandatory with the hopes that people are going to find a way to get through it, that's not a plan. Right. Um, but I always, I've said like, you're, we don't even have enough active duty sailors to man ships, submarines, like aircraft, whatever, like all the, all the regular things. How are right. we going to like man stuff like that? Which I think, right, yeah. again, I'll make the argument is like equally important, but the military doesn't feel that way. So it's like, mm -hmm. how are you going to man these things with the right people? Because you, you're, you're going to think logically that, and, and I would say like accurately, that you want your best and brightest leaders there teaching this mm -hmm. stuff, but they want their bright, brightest leaders, their best and brightest leaders out there doing the damn thing. Which I understand, right. but that's not how you how you cultivate like future best and brightest type leaders, right? Like I, I need everybody to be competent, and we'll be a much stronger yeah. fighting force if everybody's confident, competent, and we don't have just anomalies out there pulling all the weight or not. Mm -hmm. Where and then you get a bad command culture and all that stuff. But yeah. um, I always said like, why are we not using reservists, veterans, older, tired guys like me? Like yeah. you would rapidly and i you could probably do a lot of it on a volunteer basis like i do that shit for free like yeah, yeah i'm not gonna say sure. no to a check and if you want a lot of my time you're gonna have to cut a check but yeah. <laughs> like if you're talking about like you want me to come out and like be part of a course for a couple of days mm -hmm. i do that for free just for the access yeah. to sailors and because i'm passionate about this stuff and because like i have love in my heart for the organization no matter no matter what right mm -hmm. But like, and you would dudes, hope. Go ahead. I was gonna say, and you hope that people on the ship that you're going to talk to have that same mindset that you do that are open. Because if yeah, you go to a culture yeah. that's just like, I don't want to learn about this. This dude's wasting like right. two hours of my time. It's not gonna really do much. Right. 
And, but also like, it's, I understand like the idea behind and like ELD was kind of like this hybrid, like everybody, nobody wanted to do command delivered stuff. Cause the command doesn't have time to do that. And like, largely it just wasn't happening. People were just saying they did it and like mm. rocking people anyway, when yeah. nothing happened. Um, but then they're trying to get this like compromise. We're like, like, we're, they're not going to give us money to recreate like the old, um, like nav lead stuff where it was like brick and mortar schoolhouses, Work center soup class, LPO class, like it wasn't horrific. I went to the work center soup class when I was a second class and it was, it was decent. Like I learned some stuff. It wasn't, it was better than nothing. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't think it was useless at all. Like, I think they taught some stuff that actually, you know, it wasn't bad. Um, and then, um, so they created in like ELD is like this hybrid where it's like, oh, we're going to take it off the flight line is what they would say. I don't know why some, you know, mm -hmm. it's probably an aviator. Um, but like t they take it off of the operational command, right? So like submarines going to sea, haze gray ships, like flight lines, right. whatever, and make it like the shore command guys are, are and girls are going to get qualified as facilitators and then organize a class. And then all you got to do is send your people when you can. Mm. Sounds really nice. Like on whatever yeah, dry does, race yeah. board, on whatever dry right. race board it got mocked up on, I'm sure it seemed like some like big brain stuff, but like, the problem is that you, who's going to, you know, like you're acting like these shore duties, one, are fully manned and just have like extra people laying around and mm -hmm. none of them are. Like we we're always, it yeah. seems like every shore command is like 75% man. And then right. nav hers and their infinite wisdom because they can't recruit enough people are redistroing people or bupers or whatever, are redistroing people early and just finding new ways to like pull people off shore duty and send them back out to sea to fill these holes. So these mm -hmm. shore commands are suffering. And it's yeah. like... So who's going to do this and like ELD stuff if there's only like if you have a short command that's manned at 65, 70, 75%. Like I was at SEL at, a, at an A school where I was about 75% manned just the whole time I was there. And you try to tell mm -hmm. me I now have to facilitate leadership courses for other commands. I'm just like, right. no, no. Yeah, you're I mean, like, yeah, I did an eight hour day on the podium teaching. And then I would go into yeah. my office to try to do the SEL things. I was working 12 hour days, six days a week on short duty, like not right. six, it's five yeah. days a week. I was working a lot of hours. And so it's just like, cause you had to. And then like, there were days where I wouldn't eat lunch cause I'd march the students to chow. And like, cause I had, somebody's got to babysit them. Cause they, we were on an army base right. and had all these other rules and all this. Crazy. So it's like, it, there just wasn't enough hands to go around. And so it's like, right. what do you do when you add, now you're going to add this other crap on top of all the other things. They're like that dude. No, like I just didn't know yeah. I'm not doing it. Um, so yeah. I don't know how they're going to accomplish that, but it like, I've seen reservists called, uh, uh, called on like, um, like we had, I don't know why, but like the flag command I was at when I retired, I was like on the flag staff doing inspections on submarines, but we had like a, an 05 uh, reserve officer that was there, but I, he was on like active orders. So he was like always around, but he would coordinate all these reserve elements that we had and like their drill weekends and all this other crap. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were times where they're like, there's, um, what was I going to say? The decom submarines come here because the shipyards here, right? So like, there's right. times where they would need some help with some stuff just to decom the boats because the detailers would rip all those guys off those boats so fast because the boats, the operational submarines need those guys that right. there wouldn't be people there to like finish decomming the submarine. So they'd be like, yeah. hey, reserve dude, can we borrow an LSC for a couple months? And they would get drop these orders, get a guy up here on active duty orders, and we got ourselves an LSC. Mm -hmm. And so it's yeah. like, why couldn't we do that with like reservists or full-time support or a combination or a hybrid of that? And uh, cut because like, think about like what, go back to what we were talking about with all the relevant experience and education and all the wildly varying places that you all come from. It's like, you got the level of expertise that would be in that room. Like, even if I get a reservist for a week, like if your drill week or weekend or whatever is teaching in like ELD classes, like... <laughs> That, and I you're like, that. oh yeah, yeah, and you are like a dude with an MBA or some some lawyer guy, like you know what I mean? Like you'd have this wildly diverse experience and like get people like that in there to teach leadership, like or yeah. hire people like me to be the permanent employees, and then you all are getting called in. To, you know what I mean? Like God, it would just it's such a it's such an easy fix. Like yeah, it's gonna cost money to hire employees, but like you'd have to. 
I on paper, I would like I would cost a lot less than like a chief would. Like, because you're not right. paying for my health insurance, you're not paying mm-hmm. for, you know what I mean? Like, you're just paying my salary. Like, a, a standard issue submariner, I mean, you're talking about like a half million bucks just to get me from boot camp to the boat. So it's like, mm-hmm. but that's not real when you're just paying me to show up fat and cut with a beard yeah. to teach beard, a leadership yep. class. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not fat, I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's like the. It seems like such an obvious solution to like draw on the population of retirees, veterans, and especially like you. I mean, I can make you do it. Like if I'm Big Navy, I can be like, "Hey, MN One, I need you in Norfolk yeah. to teach these NLK LD classes during your normal whatever. Instead of going to Guam and yeah. building mines, you're gonna go here, and then you would be like, "Really? Like, all right, cool. You know, yeah, for sure. So yeah. I, it seems like such an easy answer. I'm, I'm sure there's stuff that like I'm missing that I don't know about how reservist stuff works, like yeah. you know, manning and detailing and what right. you need to be doing for active. Somebody's spreadsheet needs to be green. I get it, but also, yeah, if we want to do this in the GLT stuff, we need, right. yeah, we need to, you know, man those those positions. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm on that boat two weeks, anyways. You yeah. know, let me teach, let me teach your crew about effective right. communication and what right. somebody's body language when they're responding to you looks mm-hmm. like, right? Right. And how to, how to deal with that. So yeah, um, something and I you never could, learned in, in, in the Navy. <laughs> yeah. And you could even like, I'm sure there's plenty of local reservists like, so like for you being in that area, like you could, I mean, it'd probably be more relevant for like, I don't know, like the uh, career recruiters, like for the recruiting districts. Like I know those guys are all around. So it's like somebody needs this in like stuff at like everywhere. Mm-hmm. And like, it may just right. be the recruiters, but like there there's Navy literally everywhere. So it's like for you, it's like you could just show up in civilian clothes and say like, Hey, I'm, you know, in addition to being all of these things, I'm also an MN one in the reserves. And, but like, and I'm going to show up in civilian clothes and teach you. Yeah. You ain't got to shave your beard, bro. Like just, uh, that'd be awesome. You. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. And I think, <laughs> I think it would be almost better that way because then it's not, I don't have to overcome this like, oh, you're not in the real Navy. You know what I mean? Like, cause you're not right. coming in there as that guy. You're coming in there as you, but also I moonlight as MN one buck. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I have real, I have active duty Navy experience. I, I'm a currently a drilling reservist and this is what I do in my civilian career. And so when you're coming there, you, you almost have like that expert power going where it's like, you're coming in there as an industry professional in it that does the following blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And I'm going to teach you about that kind of stuff, like communication or whatever. Um, yeah. And there's, there's, yeah. there's even books out there on how to present a PowerPoint and how you're supposed to, <laughs> and nobody in the Navy tells you that, you know, it's something I learned yeah. in the civilian world. Like this is how you're supposed to, you know, you start with your skills. Like this is who I am and this is what mm-hmm. my background. So, you know, that, if I'm telling you something, I at least have right. the experience of telling you something. It's not just like, oh yeah, dude, right. you should totally right. be nice to that dude. And um, <laughs> I just think there you would have a little bit of a barrier. I think just I'm thinking about active duty like E4 E5s and, and like ELD class, and here comes this reservist on his drill weekend. It's like <laughs> that's not gonna. It's like a substitute teacher in like middle school. You're gonna get your soul yeah. snatched out of your body. But I, you if know, you do I will it the tell other you. Way, God. Nobody, at least in my experience, nobody's ever come up to me. Maybe they've done probably like, oh, these reservists. I've never yeah. had somebody say that to me. And I'm I like, get pissed. go ahead, man. There were times, so I, I never, because you're a reservist, what happened was I worked on a flag staff. I'm a master chief. I don't think I'm that important, but it'd be real neat if I could just like have my own office that nobody messes with ever. It's not real. Right. I had like cubicle in a basement with all the other supply guys, right? And I would come in after the drill weekend, which I never really knew when it was, but I could tell when it had happened Monday morning. Yeah, I'd come into my it's office. A mess. <laughs> oh, yeah, my desk is a mess. My shit's all moved <laughs> around. My computer's locked out by somebody I've never heard of. Like, like what is happening? And like, show yeah. some respect, dude. Like, yeah. log out. Like, I'm not, I'm yeah. not even like, you can't use my desk. And like, and I had one of those uh, laptops that like went into a dock for my computer. I'm like, yeah. I'm just gonna start taking this home. Like I'm yeah. just to be a, just to be a jerk, just to make it like, so that nobody's at my desk because you're not like, just be 
you're in another man's house, essentially. Like, just right, have, show yeah. some show some respect. Not that because I'm a master chief, because you're sitting at another person's desk. Put everything back where yeah. you found it. Maybe wipe it with a bleach wipe, which yes, I had on my desk, and <laughs> log should, out yeah. <laughs> so that I don't have to like scram my computer so that I can log in. And then you know, NMCI computers. It's a half the day my computer doesn't work now because I hit reset. <laughs> like so, yeah. like come on, man. Coins are like, all moved around. And... Yeah, so that was me. Like that was this me being salty about reservists. Was like sometimes yeah. they'd come in for meetings and stuff, and the chiefs would be there, and I'd be like. I swear to Christ, if one of your yeah. people doesn't log out of my computer again, I'm going to find you. I'm going to come to your oh, civilian man. job and I'm going to make a scene. <laughs> like, Jeez, like yeah. dude, come on. Ugh. But yeah, I don't yeah, I, I it, can't yeah. say I've ever like been salty just because somebody's a reservist. I don't care. You can't like you can tell, you know, I mean, it's a, sometimes you can like you go on a boat and people are like, I don't want you to touch my stuff. Hey, you know, okay. it's like, I, mean, I, I get it. I get it. We, we do it once a week, two right. weeks out of the year, but we're still You're, the same as qualified in that, you know? Yeah, but your proficiency level is a lot lower. Submarines love to harp Probably on proficiency. Yeah. So it's like, if you're not, if it's not something you do every day, like, you're not going to touch anything without somebody supervising you. I can tell you that right yeah. now. Unless it's like low level stuff. Like, if we're talking about, like, you're going to help my dudes do some admin, like, okay, I'm not worried about that. But like, if you're going to be involved in like a maintenance item, Especially like, I feel like the con the consequences of you guys doing your job wrong is stuff explodes when it's not supposed to. So it's like, yeah, I'm probably going to have a little oversight of like a more experienced yeah. uh, or well, maybe not more experienced, but more proficient person with you um, right. to prevent that. It's like not like I don't want you to get training and, and increase your level of proficiency, but I also don't want anything to explode when it's not supposed to. I just want to go home and be like, I worked on a nuclear reactor. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, I almost got to go in the reactor compartment, but I freaked out and didn't do it. I like peeked in and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I don't want to. My wife's been in them though. She no. was a, she worked at the shipyard for a long time and she was a nuke, like a mechanic, uh, but it's, they were called ship fitters. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, she's been all up in the reactor compartment and all kinds of other stuff, but it's a yeah. completely different Navy than where I'm yeah, from. So. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's it's, a nuclear reactor? <laughs> submarines, man. It's weird. Yeah. It's a weird. It's funny. Like I was talking to, I did a podcast recently with a, a combat vet, like an army infantry combat, vet. great dude. Um, but he was telling his wild story, like firefights and, and, uh, I think they're, they're in Iraq or Af I think he was in Afghanistan. Um, yeah, he was in Afghanistan. I'm almost, not, I'm like 90% sure, but whatever. Mm. He was over there somewhere. <laughs> and yeah. uh, so he's talking about the firefights, but then they got blown up by an IED a couple times. Wow. And like, it was wild. Mm. His story was insane. And so like for me, being a dude that's never been involved with any of that, like to me, I'm like, Ugh, you can keep that dude like i'm good like <laughs> i'm glad i didn't go in my and, corner and yeah but yeah. then like he's i'm talking to him about submarines and he's like you can keep that like you're insane i think you guys are yeah. and you, he's like you could never get me on a submarine ever i don't right. care what the like incentives were how much money you're gonna pay me. he's like you could never get me to do that and i was just like really like because in, in my mind yeah. i'm like it's a lot safer than afghanistan at the time like kind of i mean like the ocean's trying to kill you all the time, but like, you know, like right. not really under the water. Like getting, it's like, yeah, yeah like not, nah, I mean, we're pretty good at not allowing it. So it's like, you know, we got a pretty good safety record, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, it was, it's funny when like, cause I, I've had some buddies say they met Navy SEALs that were just like, you guys are insane. And I'm just like, Oh yeah. You're yeah. insane. Like what? Yeah. Like, they do so much like, le like so much stuff that's so way riskier and like seems insane to me. And like, I'm like, uh, you, you're insane. I'm not insane. Yeah. You're insane. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. I, th I feel like everybody thinks that about everybody almost except for like, you know, I'm not, never mind. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so Get what's, um, <laughs> yeah, I always, everybody's like, I don't get a lot of, of, uh, criticism. That's like ridiculous. Like most of it's constructive or praise, but then if I post an episode on Reddit, like stand by, but that it's right. <laughs> I know what I'm getting myself into there. So it's like, but right, yeah, it's Reddit, I just yeah. won't post this one on Reddit. Yep. Life hack. <laughs> Thicker with my nugget.
Um, what's uh, so? What's the path forward for you? Are like, are, how long you been in? Are you trying to put on anchors? Go officer? Call it a day? Yeah. Soon? Like, yeah. What's the, I what's yes, the I got twelve years. Twelve years now. So four years okay. uh, reserve, and then twelve years or twelve years total, or four years active, and then eight years reserve. Yeah, uh, in June. So, gotcha. Um, I'm up. I'm up for chief now. Um, okay. Just took the test a few weeks ago. So. Uh, fingers How, crossed. How's, I, how's the uh, quotas and stuff for? Because you guys are already just like unicorns, like so. Like how? Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably pretty horrific. I would imagine, but uh, it's it's zero it zero last cycle for E six and E seven. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, oh, nice. um, I am trying to do it the hard way. Uh, I got sailor of the year for LCS run two. I'm up for circle okay. uh, sailor of the year. Oh, um, you're trying to like... beat this week. Meritoriously that advanced. That's probably yeah. you probably got a better it's chance. Hard. Of advanced, <laughs> probably a higher uh, advancement percentage than that with that path. But that's yeah, how it was. Yeah. Like uh, I was up for Master Chief for a few years, and it was goose eggs for like two years straight. And I'm like, this, come on, dude. Like, but then you see like the the surface side promoting a grip of people. Right. Just like, why yeah. can't I just? I my job's the same. Like, put me on an aircraft carrier. Like, I'll go. Yeah. But like, why yeah. I I have no chance to advance? Like that seems kind of unfair and ridiculous. Like by no fault of my own, and like right. everyone else that was eligible too. It's like I understand yeah. if like I'm not fully qualified, but like I was fully qualified and competitive. Um, yeah, generally. But like in the submarine community, it gets weird because it's like if you're not a cob, which is essentially a CMC on a submarine then you, like there's a, a lot of the submarine cmc community believes that you shouldn't ever make master chief and it's just like right yeah kind of, but yeah. like come on dude like and yeah. i feel like there's a lot of positions that they can and should make that that level of expertise technically makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. um and you just have a way more efficient like organization overall and like i could you know write somebody a really convincing point paper on why we need more CS master chiefs in the submarine force. Because yeah. like, if, if you think about it strategically, we go to war, right? Submarines are going to be running out of food left and right. And it's not because mm -hmm. there's not enough food. It's because the people that are in charge of making sure there's enough food don't do a good job. Like they just right. load a bunch of, there's zero supervision. Well, yeah. That's not entirely true. They started to like micromanage the ISIC level uh, command started to micromanage it a tiny bit where like they review the food orders because so many of these morons were either running out of food or leaving food on the pier. Like they would load out and go to sea and just leave a bunch of crap on the pier oh, and they would all spoil yeah. and to do surveys and stuff. So it's like, you know, like <laughs> if you put a dude like me in charge of a thing that uh, doesn't allow that, or I'm, doing training i don't know like there's a couple like of spots like that but if you if you created more expertise in those career fields and kept people mm -hmm. around to make sure those processes run smoothly when we're at war <laughs> people aren't going to run out of food and that's right, like yeah. when Important. you think about it in through the lens that i do like which is submarines it's like that's the only thing li like logistics is the only thing limiting the submarine it's like mm -hmm. as long as there's food and the thing's not broken which means like we have repair parts on um, like the competency to repair it is in the capacity to repair it is really important too right but like if you yeah. don't have the parts you're going home right or you're going yeah. somewhere where they have the parts and if you like if you if the thing's broken and, and you can't you know do the mission you can't get around it and then if you run out of food you're going home like it's the only thing limiting because we have a nuclear reactor we're not running out of gas man like you can just stay right. there forever if you have like if i can make yeah. I, I can make water i can feed people and i can fix the submarine when it breaks from wear and tear i can stay at sea forever like yeah theoretically um and so it's not important to the nuclear navy all the 1120s out there i'm talking to you it's not important to them until it's important to them you know what i mean it's one of those like yeah. it's not important until it breaks like it's not important until your ship runs out of coffee in the like off the coast of country x like good luck right. you know what I mean? <laughs> like good luck yeah. so like that was one thing like i would leave with like two thousand pounds of coffee for and for a submarine that's preposterous wow i'd come back with like a thousand like i was wow. i would run out of 
everything before I ran out of coffee. Like, yeah. like the, the, my, I would wear out my poopy suits before I ever ran out of coffee. Like it was, it was, yeah. it, I, I just was like, nope. I, cause I heard about a boat doing it and just how horrific it was. And I'm like, oh right. yeah, that understand. We, uh, all. We, ran out of, we ran out of filters once. And so we had to like, yeah, Jerry, just, like Jerry yeah, but, with paper yeah, and like the create, the creative <laughs> nature of an E4 can solve that problem, but you can't make yeah. more coffee. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm I, coffee was one. And then I was on it. My very first submarine, my very first Westpac we did we were involved in Iraqi freedom launch and tomahawks. And so like we did a six month Westpac and we were on our way home and they pulled us into Guam, loaded us out with tomahawks. And they're like, actually go to the red sea. And we're like, uh, right. like we're supposed to be going home. So then we went and spent 83 days in the red sea. And then we went through the Suez canal. So we went from the red sea to the Med. I think. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yep. To a different place. Cause like we're tomahawks were falling on Turkey or something or Saudi Arabia yeah. or whatever. Then that, they were getting pissed. So they're like, you can't shoot them over us anymore. Um, so yeah, I went through the canal, went up there. We were going to shoot some more. And then I, I don't think we did. I can't, I think we only shot once. It was like over like 48 hours. I think we shot twice, but anyway, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we ran out of flour for the reasons that I was explaining. You oh, don't, wow. You, yeah. Right. You don't, realize how much shit flour. flour goes into <laughs> yeah. until you run out of oh, flour. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Like first we started rationing it because he like, they realized it too late basically. And then, um, so first we started rationing it and then it was, so it was like, do you guys want to keep pizza or do you want to keep like bread at meals? And they're like, pizza. <laughs> pizza so then, yeah. And then it became like, okay, now we can't do desserts and bread at all. And we just kept pizza, I think, or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and it was pizza. just gone. And then, like, we did a couple of underway replenishments, and there were other submarines that stole our damn flour. So then oh, we, no. And, Jeez. and I don't know if they were running out, but I bet they weren't in as bad a shape as us. Uh, yeah. And I actually, ironically, uh, I met the cob of – so I was on Louisville, um, which is being decommed right now. And then Key West was out there. I, I'm pretty. There was three submarines, but Key West is the one that stole our fucking flower. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm to this podcast. The, like, wait a second. So no, no. So the, it gets better. <laughs> so when I'm at the A school on the SEL there, um, and this civilian guy's there, but he's wearing like a tiny CMC pin. And I was like, oh hey, like where were you? And he had, I think he might have had fish. Like like you know how dudes do on their suit lapel or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, what boats were you on? And he tells me Q QS. I'm like, when were you on the Key West? He's like, oh, I was a cop of the Key West, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, really? <laughs> and I started telling him what <laughs> boats I was on. And I was like, you stole our flower, you mother. And then I like went into this thing like where I started. Oh, like, like, he's like, well, it wasn't me. It was my, it was my chop. Like it was my supply <laughs> officer. I wasn't even there. Like he's like, but yeah, we where stole your flower. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, find me this supply officer. But yeah, it was, dude, it was rough because there was like, there was this one scene where like, uh, so we were, for some reason, my MS1, and his, so we're rationing flour. So he get, looks in the recipe cards and he finds the bread that requires the least amount of flour. And it was biscuits. Yeah. And it wasn't just right. like biscuits. They have this recipe for what's called drop biscuits, where you like use an ice cream scoop to make them. And the recipe's horrific. They're the worst biscuits mm. you've ever had in your life. Like, yeah you i started and like it was funny because after that deployment i had culinary experience as a civilian so i just brought all these cookbooks to work and i started making right. the buttermilk buttermilk biscuit recipe out of uh it's called the new professional chef it's a textbook for the culinary institute of america it's like the culin it's like a cook bible basically um mm -hmm. and like it's the stand like the industry standard textbook it's like if you're ever going to buy a book buy that one but uh yeah. I started making it, but I just like, instead of buttermilk, I just melted more butter and added it with the milk kind of thing. Like I just substituted ingredients. And then I like rolled them out the way you're supposed to and cut them with a biscuit cutter and made real biscuits. I put those out one day and the crew almost mutiny, dude, because on this deployment, <laughs> they were making these horrific drop biscuits and I didn't have yeah, a book yeah. with me at the time. I didn't like know I could even get away. I was still a qualified submarines. I was brand new. Like I, that was my right. first year on a submarine. So uh, they were making these horrific biscuits. So you're essentially like wasting flour because nobody wants to eat these things. They're like hard as a baseball. They're horrible. Yeah. 
So he's like essentially just burning flour for no reason because we don't right. have enough flowers and his mind made sense. Um, and this one day, uh, this dude, Kevin Hines, shout out to Kevin Hines. If you're listening, I doubt you are. He's our old retired. Uh, I believe he retired as a senior chief. He's our assistant navigator. Uh, at the time he was a first class enormous man. Um, mm-hmm. really one of the like popular first classes on the boat. Great dude. And he like looked out for cooks too. Most of the time, me specifically, but, uh, so he walks by and this, this other kid who's kind of our, one of our dirt bags was, he was the, what we call the night baker. So he's on nights and he made all the bread. And if there was bread to make, mm-hmm. which uh, there wasn't supposed to be bread because we didn't have right. flour, this idiot yeah. made a small batch of bread and was hiding it in the galley. So what? he had a lo- <laughs> they're out there eating these, eating this crappy meal with these hard, garbage biscuits and kevin comes by looks in there's like a little service window on a 688 submarine um where it drops yeah. down and, and you can close it he left it open made himself a peanut butter and jelly and he's in the galley eating his little peanut butter and jelly on white bread and like the bread's out nice it's like the perfect scene right yeah. he <laughs> snapped kevin went in the galley grabbed him tried to pull him over the counter somebody like restrained him and then I bet you, if you went down there as their decom of the boat, um, I mean it's probably razor blades by now, but there yeah. there was the drop window. Kevin took one of them biscuits and just like fastballed it at the at, at him, and he like threw yeah. the window up to block it, and it dented the window. Oh my god! That's, it was that hard, and not only did he Jeez. throw it that hard, but the biscuit was so hard and dense. That it dented this like stainless steel window, and so it's like probably still intact, we, right? The, yeah, the I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there. Man, I would think it would probably at least cracked if it didn't explode. But like, <laughs> it would, and like, there was a couple dudes that were trying to beat the crap out of this cook, and I was just like, good. Like, I mean, he deserves it. One, but yeah. also, like, for doing that, like, in the in, the, and you got to think like. We've, at that point, it's like people aren't pissed about not having flour. That's just like the twist mm-hmm. of the dagger. It's like everybody's pissed that they didn't get to go home on time, that we've all been gone for nine months at this point. And, yes, right. we're running out of food, but, like, everybody's just stressed out and, and like, wants to go home and whatever. But, um, but yeah, like, it's just, it was wild. But, anyway, yeah, like, we ran out of flour on that deployment and such a dumpster fire. Yeah, I can't. I can't recall any time we ran out of food. We'd always be on as soon as we secured from seeing anchor. We were on water hours. Like, all right, yeah, water yeah. hours. We're like, oh, we don't get to take a shower. This, this is this trip. So, oh yeah, um, yeah. Like they do that on submarines sometimes. Like we used to. I managed to catch an evaporator on every submarine I was ever on. Um, they they replaced it with what they call an RO unit, which is reverse osmosis, mm-hmm. I guess, where right. it's just. It's like you you can just take Hollywood showers all the time, and it's like it's so yeah. efficient, and it barely breaks. But like those evaporators were held together with chicklets and duct tape, and it was hard to get the parts and all this other stuff. So mm-hmm. those things would go down, and it's like the galley would get prioritized. I would always get to take a shower because yep. I'm a cook. Yeah, but yeah, showers like you'd get you couldn't take a shower and also, and I would try because I was the cook chief, so like it's not like I was in there cooking food all the time. Um, so like I would you know like I'd go every other day and like right. when they were doing like, i'm like because like, i don't really need and like the chiefs would still give me a hard time it's like dude i still got to go in there and like supervise and train and like so it's like yeah i'm not not taking a shower every day especially like there are times i'd go in there and i'd come out like covered in flour and sweating and like, yeah i mean That's like i'm not not <laughs> yeah well no nah, i'm talking you know, i don't yeah, run yeah. out of flour i have a load plan <laughs> but uh yeah no it's 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 it happens, but it's like, I, yeah, I managed to catch a, the old technology. And so like, by the time, you know, like we were like the last submarine in the Pacific fleet with an evaporator and it like, so it's, you know, breaking down every five seconds and there's no parts. And yeah. Yeah. Good times. Story of minesweepers. Yeah. So glad to be a retired guy. Um, yeah. What's, uh, is there, what, what are some of the, uh, did we catch kind of, oh, shit, drop my Girl Scout cookies. Did we catch all the things that you want to talk about directly? Cause I just been asking you questions off the top of my head, but I, I don't want to know. No, yeah. I think uh, I want to make sure we scratch sure. the itch, man. Like, yeah, I think talking about the, how to utilize the reserves the best, um, especially if we're going there for two weeks anyways. Um, yeah. Take our skill sets and, you know, a lot of, a lot of smart guys. Yeah, um, who have a lot of experience in different jobs outside of the Navy is is key. Yeah, in different culture yeah. environments and just come to the ship and just teach. You know, or I don't not even teach, think but people just give them, like, 
I don't think people realize that you're there to be leveraged, to be honest with you. Like I remember yeah. when I was at, so I was on that army base and it's like a pretty joint environment, even though it wasn't a joint base proper, it was like a, an army base and it just had everybody there. But we, um, we were doing like, we, we'd send kids overseas, right? Like they'd get orders to Japan to a ship or to Rota mm -hmm. to a ship or whatever. We have to do these overseas screenings. The army, of course, because it makes any sense at all, doesn't use the same paperwork, doesn't do the same process. So we would get calls from like commands in Japan, like how this person shouldn't even be over here. And it's like, well, they did their screening and got, they said yes. And so we sent them over there and they're like, mm -hmm. this is like AR form, whatever. Like, what is this? Like, this isn't even the right side. And I'm like, dude, we're all cooks here. Like, what do you want from yeah. me? So I'm like, I told, and then like when I checked into that command, uh, they told me to take my medical records home. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, right. the medical wow. here is horrific and they'll lose your record. And so like, you shouldn't just, just keep it yourself. It and them. I'm like, yeah. and I, I immediately am just like, that's not real, but okay. So I'm like, well, I'll, I'll come back to that. Like I'm still checking in, you know? And so I'm like, I'll, I'll come back to that when I'm like, I know my way around. So eventually I'm like, all right, what are we doing? Cause like, I'm going to medical. Like, and they're seeing mm -hmm. me and they're keeping records right. somewhere, but like they didn't have my medical records. So none of that stuff's in my medical record either. So I'm like, dude, I need, I called our headquarters and I'm like, I need a corpsman. Like I, I need somebody here. I, this isn't like, I need a corpsman billet. Like get me like an HM2 that knows kind of right. what they're doing with like, particularly records and screenings and stuff. And they're like, dude, you're not going to get a billet for a corpsman, but. Yeah. call the like find the nearest nosk and i'm like what mm -hmm. the hell is a nosk and they're yeah. like i start explaining and he's like call the nearest nosk see if you can get like a reservist to come drill there and while they're there all they'll do is records and screenings i'm like yeah but that doesn't really fix my problem of like i don't have like if they're not here all the time but we're doing screenings all the time that doesn't really fix it and they're like dude best case scenario sh the the corpsman you get trains the navy they're the army people that are at this clinic right because there yeah. was like a there was they did a lot of army ait which is like a navy a school so they're they had like staff medical and then there was like the troop medical clinic was for the students and so they had like mm -hmm. nurses and uh like i don't even know medics i guess i don't know what they call um army like corpsmen essentially i know they have yeah. like, medics but i don't know what they're called so uh, it, and it ends up working out like incredibly. So like I call the NOSC, I get in touch with their SEL. Uh, it's like a command chief. And, uh, we get an, uh, at the time she was an, she was an HM2, but she was full-time support. So she was always there. Mm -hmm. So I right. got her all the time. Like not like she still had to do things for them too, but like, um, I got a lot more of her time and, uh, she was outstanding went over to the clinic and trained up all their people and then was not only that but she, she's like where are you all i'll go through your medical records and i'm like they're at home and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, she's just like oh my god and she's like yes yeah. go get your medical record i'll go through it blah 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 and then she ended up becoming kind of like a friend of mine because like we went to the same crossfit gym at the time um she made first while she was there and made chief she's now a uh, some kind of officer uh she got commissioned in a like medical administration i think and she's like a jg yeah. or something she's she was so it turns out i got a hot runner too kind of like maybe it was by accident right. or luck but um i didn't even know that was a path and like when i i had this this not even a gapped billet i just didn't even have a billet that i should have had. right yeah uh, because it wasn't a proper joint base because I so I didn't have Corman, you know what I mean? And so it's like it, she fixed all that stuff. Like the overseas screenings were fixed. The and and like I still have heartburn because I, I was about to transfer and I started routing her a NAM just because mm -hmm. thank thank you for everything you did for us. Cause she fixed my match. She mm -hmm. got all the stuff for that I got saw for while I was there, put into my medical record, which then contributed to my disability and everything else when I retired. So like Thank God right. she, I, I mean, I was on it asking those questions, but also like she did all that for me and put it in my record. She's like, your IDC is going to hate me because I didn't organize any of this shit, but it's in your record. <laughs> so I'm like, that's yeah. all that matters. I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. My doc, my doc will get over it. Um, but yeah, it's like you, you have these paths available to you. And I don't know how many chiefs out there. This is probably the most important part of the podcast because most of my audience is, I do have reservists listening, but most of my 
listeners are active duty sailors. It's like, right. especially for the chiefs and officers, it's like, if you have gaffed billets, especially shore commands, this sh- it, it, it should almost never be happening. It's like, go leverage your reservists, go to the NOSC, form right. a relationship. Um, and like, and like that, like that, or like me at the time, they probably don't even know what a NOSC is. And if they do know what a yeah. NOSC is, they don't know that they can go, Hey, I need this. Do you have anybody that like could, um, come do their drill time here? Because like, I hear a lot of stories about like drill week and everybody's just sitting around looking at their phones. It's like, no, I have, yeah. I have stuff for you to do. I have a lot of stuff right. for yeah. you to do. I like, yeah. like basic enlisted submarine school in Groton, Connecticut. Cause shout out to chief Bob. They got a lot of stuff for you to do. So it's like, I don't yeah. know that everybody realizes that you guys exist and you're happy to help and you have the expertise to help. A lot of times you have expertises that they like hidden expertises. I got to get out of secret decoder ring to find out that not only can you do mindman things, but you're an IT expert. And, and it's not like you're yeah. not an IT, but you kind of are. You're probably better at it than most ITs in the name. <laughs> so like, you know what I mean? Like there's so much hidden value there, I guess, is like people really need to explore that as an option, especially in the environment the Navy finds itself in right now, where they're giving out six figure enlistment bonuses just for you to fog a mirror. And they're like right. giving out crazy SRBs to try to keep people around and like all this other crap. They're waving PRTs and sh- <laughs> like, oh, you can yeah. just, yeah. there's no, like they just validated the lower your standards meme for everybody by just lo- literally just lowering the standard. Like, Oh, you had all those PRT failures. No, you didn't. <laughs> like, yeah. Let me wait well, they, my uh, magic wand. So they, I mean, now they call them NR, NRCs. I think. Oh, They're so not NOSCs anymore. anymore? Okay. Yeah, they they changed they changed the the wording. But gotcha. You know, like what you're saying, like if you have reservists nearby, you know, ask Ooh. them ask them what they do in the civilian world. Like, yeah. And if you really want that for your command, right. then you really want. Like, I have first classes that need to learn how to do this, or I need. I need mm-hmm. to build out my bench of second classes so that yeah. way when they become first classes, we're not like a deer in the headlights trying to yeah. take leadership. Yeah. You know, just come over and and, and talk. And, and you yeah. know, reserve, like you said, reservists sometimes, some locations, yeah, they do sit around on drill weekends and roll right. their thumbs and do their paperwork and stuff. Mm-hmm. If you can do anything that makes you set yourself apart, I mean, even when it comes up to board level time, I mean, that's really going to look well on them, but you're also yeah. helping out that command. Crazy so. eval bullet. Like I went, when, uh, shout yep. out to Jill, um, when I, she came, her eval came up, I sent her like this thick eval bullet of all the stuff she had done at the A school. And it's like, she wouldn't have gotten that bullet anywhere. I mean, like she was, I'm sure she was getting after it no matter what, cause that's who she is. But like, man, like just thick eval bullet. And I, I routed right. her a name. It never got awarded. I asked her about it eventually. But like I, I try. I told the my friend Sasha was chief there at the time. She's a master chief now, um, about to retire, I think. But she, uh, I told her, I'm like, can you, can you like make sure this gets routed and gets back to to Jill? Because my, I had a warrant as a site director that was just an absolute clown. He like actively mm-hmm. worked against us. It was so ridiculous. Um, he's like a villain in a really bad movie. Like, and I don't mean bad, like villainous. I mean, bad, like just, you don't want to watch it. Like he's just, he was right. such a clown. And so like, he was, he really had a problem with me routing it for some reason. And I'm like, dude, like, I, I don't think you understand what she did for us. And right. so, um, I sent it directly to my CMC and told him like, look, man, I, I, I'd stake my whole career on this chick deserving this medal. <laughs> like yeah. she deserves recognition for what she did. Uh, and then right. I guess it got lost in the sauce. I'm still pissed. About oh, jeez, yeah. She's doing just fine, but I'm still pissed. About yeah. it Cause it was, <laughs> it was wrong. Like she should have gotten recognized for everything she did for us. But like that notwithstanding, I mean, hopefully they do a better job of taking care of those reservists at other commands. But, um, mm-hmm. we were kind of anomalous in that way where like our chain of command was just trash. Um, like at the headquarters level, it was good, but like at the learning site locally, it was, it was, I couldn't win with this freaking any, I mean, I had three warrants and they were all clowns, but Mm. anyway, I know there's some food service warrants out there that don't suck, but the ones I interacted with were horrific, but, uh, (laughs) I mean, like one of them ended up getting investigated and I think kicked out of the Navy. Oh, wow. Like it was, it was that, that type of part, like they were all like, they were just horrific. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, take advantage of it. Like that's the, I think that's the moral of the story. Is like not and and again, like not just like they don't just have 
the competency of their rating in their or their career field and, right, or, yeah. or like warfare community even they have the competency of whatever the hell it is they do as a civilian which is clearly not always like you can't yeah. go do mine repair as a civilian probably like i can't no, imagine that if, was if it was a real was thing it'd be part. like as yeah. a dod civilian you know like that was the worst part in getting out in, in 2012 off of active duty. Yeah, it's like, I'm a mind yeah. What do I do? And it's like, yeah, uh, you can go turn wrenches somewhere. It's like, yep. that's, you know, I spent yep. my four years doing that. Like, I don't, right. I don't know. So, yeah, um, it's like the, yeah, it's we, like the, have you ever watched, um, I think it is it the Pacific. It's like band of brothers, but it's about the Pacific yeah, war yeah. world war two. So yep. the dude, one of the dudes, he's the journalist kid that comes back. Uh, and he's at like some kind of job fair thing. And it's like, there's a whole bunch of like vets there or like guys in their uniforms trying to get jobs. And they all are like, you know, like supply or like, uh, they were doing something right. else. And he's like a trigger puller. He was just like an infantry Marine <laughs> that was like storming the beaches at Guadalcanal. And he's like explaining to her, the chicks, this chick is at a typewriter. She's asking him like, Do, can you type? Do you have these skills? Do you have that skill? Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, do you have anything that you're good at? Yeah. He goes, he, and he like slams the table his fist. He's like, I'm really good at killing Japs. You know, I'm right. going to edit that out because it's, a, it's like a slur almost nowadays, but like, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, he's like, uh, and he says something to the effect of like, I don't like, do you got anything that that's relevant to? Like, uh, or he goes, they taught me how to kill the enemy. And is that like, you know, um, right is could you get yeah. any jobs where that's relevant and then he ended up uh becoming like a reporter and he wrote a bunch of books and stuff but like yeah. it's funny because he's like like the chick is like almost getting frustrated because uh he like isn't he doesn't have any like skills that translate to the right. civilian world yeah. and he's like it's not my fault we were at war yeah. like yeah. like i was doing war that's when you got any jobs where war is a good resume bullet like yeah killed a bunch of people and lived in horrific circumstances and yeah as well, well shout out but, to all the uh, companies that help um sailors when they get out take that killing yeah for to real. something a little bit more yeah translate uh, that into <laughs> yeah. all the all the attention to detail and <laughs> <laughs> dude i was just helping my wife update her resume right before this and um but yeah, like I remember the confusion I had at getting out. Like when I was retiring, I was trying to populate a resume, and it was my eyes for taps, I think, originally. And then mm -hmm. um, I did end up applying for and getting uh, signing an offer letter for a contract position, and then the contract didn't get awarded uh, for my mm -hmm. part or whatever. Um, but like, yeah, I'm like trying to translate all this crap to a resume, and I'm like, and I'm. I'm probably better at it now than I was before. And I'm pretty good at like writing and like English is kind of my jam, but yeah, it was like, it is kind of weird where you're sitting there and you're like, man, like, what did I do? And it's like, and it almost feels like, you know, those evals that some people write that are just like super embellished, like where it's <laughs> like, yeah, I did some stuff, but well, like when you yeah. read it, like you're, or even like a NAM citation or a flag letter, you're mm -hmm. like, you're like, like, I used to feel that way. Every time I wrote a flag letter for an FSA, I was just like, like, it, and it's what they're doing is important, but because of how we format like flag letters, you're making it sound like they did something like valiant that like, you right. know, and it's like, it's necessary, but like, do you deserve <laughs> a flag letter for it? I don't know. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, and it's like some of those flag letters, like they didn't spend the whole deployment with me. They went back to their division and qualified things and, you know, stood mm -hmm. sonar watches so that we were safe. Like, yeah. so they did r those things too. But it's like, yeah, when you're like sitting there, sorry, I'd have like chiefs email me and because their guy was, was FSA and they'd be like, Hey, can you send me a bullet about him FSA? Cause they didn't have a lot. Cause you know, they're new, they're still qualifying. So like, yeah, there's yeah. not a lot of meat on the bone for their eval. And so, yeah, I had like the standard eval bullet, but you're just like, when you're trying to write it, you're just like, oh my God, like, it's like, you're trying to like stretch the truth and stuff. And that's what yeah. it felt like <laughs> trying to write my resume. And it's not because in my case, it was because I was writing about myself and I'm trying mm -hmm. to translate these things. And to me, a lot of the things I did were just like, whatever, like, it was just like what we were doing and, and trying to translate yeah. that, not just into something that sounds like attractive to an employer but it's like i also have to like translate all the military stuff and like yep and like i'm like oh, did i like 
what did I do? Like, did I manage right. teams and like, uh, I don't know what to do, but yeah, I will yeah. say, um, I don't know if you've heard of it, uh, uh chat GBT. Um, uh, yes. if, str- if you struggle with writing, uh, your resume, I've heard of you it. Can send it through that and correct gram. It'll correct your grammar. You can, um, have it write your resume for you too. Uh, I'm so. so freaked out by that. I'm an old guy, dude. I'm so Wild. freaked out. That's... I'm freaked out. I ordered an Amazon Echo that I'm going to return because <laughs> yeah. I want it. So I have like blink cameras and I wanted like yep. a monitor that displayed my blink cameras. Yeah. And I just casually like I'm like looking on Amazon for a monitor of some sort that I can hopefully link up wirelessly. Um, and it, it's like, oh, this Amazon thing. And I'm like, I told myself I would never have one of these devices in my house because it freaks me out. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's wild. I don't trust that somebody's not listening constantly. And and I kind of go back and forth with it because I'm like, well, listen to what? Me farting on the couch? Like, who cares? Like, but also, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's still, I still have that, like, I'm a little freaked out by it. And so, like, the only way for you to display the cameras is to go, Alexa, show garage. And it shows me, that, and I'm like, nope. Uh, yeah. I, and then I was going through all the privacy settings, like shutting everything off, like so that it wasn't like monitoring me. That thing records your every time you say, and the thing says like, if you every time you say Alexa, everything that comes after that, it records it, and it's something about it learning your voice and being better mm-hmm. at doing its creepy thing. But like, right. I was just like, nope, it's recording me. I have proof. And I like shut those things off and deleted the recordings that were there already as I was goofing around with it. But then it. It, and it like it does it like takes liberties it's weird like i've mm-hmm. shut off everything and it's still like suggesting like podcasts to me and like telling me yeah. i should play this game or i should do this and i'm like just shut up just show me the weather yeah. and the time and display the cameras when i tell you other than that no. you're not allowed to do anything but i can't not make anymore. i can't make it that way like it's like they have yeah. created it in this way that like it just peddles st- stuff to you that you don't even want. And I'm just like, nope, yeah. I'm done. Like, this thing is so You just got to throw, throw away your phone, throw away everything. And, <laughs> well, and, and just... that's, what, that's what I was telling my wife, too. I was so freaked out by it. But I'm walking around the iPhone 13 Pro Max thing with, like, 900 cameras on it. And it's probably listening to me. And, like, we yeah. joke around all the time yeah. with, like, the ads and the stuff you see in your, like, Facebook feed or whatever. And it's like your phone's totally listening to you. And I know Builds people try to explain try to explain it away by like oh well if you're near these other phones and they looked at those things and i'm like shut up it's listening to me like i don't care yeah. what anyone says it's listening TikTok and yeah yeah i don't have that thank god but my wife does um so yeah, yeah. it's probably invaded all my devices i don't know but like yeah. there's that part it's like china's got all my information at this point anyway so it's like what do i really care like i don't know <laughs> Dark web is a wild place. Everybody, we, yeah. It's like, what? How do you? How do you delete all your information? There's books like that. I have a, I have a yeah. book back here. It's like extreme privacy: how to make yourself disappear. And it's just like the amount of work you have to do to scrub yourself yeah. if you've been online for a long time. It's just, yeah. And that's kind of like, I, I'm in this weird place where it's like I feel like if I was ever in a situation where I needed to like make myself disappear. It's like I would go like into the wild. Like that's how I would disappear. Like I would just burn in, in everything Idaho and walk and... away. Yeah. Like I'd just be gone. <laughs> I, and like I'd be completely off the grid doing whatever weird. Thing. Yeah. But that like the only way that would ever happen is like World War Three or like some dystopian post-apocalyptic future. But like, yeah, I don't. And so that's why I think about it. And I'm just like, does it like cause really the only practical worry that I can come up with is I, like identity theft. Um, right. And so I'm just like, and like, how big of a deal is that? Like, and like, if I'm creating a lot more risk by owning things like that and like, not like I'm really, I go through my phone and set all the privacy settings to things, shut off all the location crap and like all it would, I do what I can. But like, at the end of the day, it's like, I I use a VPN, all that kind of, but like, I'm not you, I'm an idiot. I don't know. I'm not a (laughs) computer guy. I'm not a network guy. So like I don't know, but also like how it's like I'm sitting there, I'm like, how worried should I even be? Um, I'm not. I've had a bunch of Intel folks tell me not to put TikTok on my phone, which I am not doing. Yeah. Um, but it's on my wife's phone, and from what I understand, it can like get onto other devices from the device that it's on if they're like on the same network and near each other mm. or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. 
like the the invasive part of it, I guess. I don't know. Who knows? We're so off topic. It's not even funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> you get some good life advice here, you know. Yeah, go, hey, well, we can do go. more of that after uh, after I stop recording. I don't want to yeah. like, subject the audience to my <laughs> like I already own this. Yeah, over my yeah. own privacy or whatever. <laughs> but uh, well, thanks, man. This was fun. Uh, I appreciate your time. I will yeah, for uh, sure. let you know when it comes out. And yeah, I really. I, I'm hoping um, that more people like if you take anything away from this, if you're actually still listening, which I doubt, <laughs> especially after that little tangent. But like, yeah, just leverage the the reservists that exist because they're everywhere. You just don't know it until you go looking for it. And there's a lot there to that. I think that I, I mean, I and I really don't understand why the institution itself doesn't like kind of force that interaction especially now when we're so undermanned and there's all these issues it's like it's like it doesn't seem like many people are even considering like not mm. like calling up reservists but like filling the gap temporarily like there's a lot of gaps that i could fill uh especially on shore duties that are getting just fleeced of all of their personnel to go back to sea yeah uh, to fill those gaps with those the the as many like whatever reservists you can because there's a lot of people um, that are willing to go on active orders for months, year. I mean, I had, there's probably three or four different people, um, on my flag staff that were reservists on active orders that, I mean, they were there for years. Like right. my friend Lindsay was, a was an IS and she was there. She was an IS chief and she was at the, our, my command for like two years. Same thing with our, we had an MC chief that was same thing. She was there for a while. Um, I'm trying to think we had like a, a, he was like the drone guy, um, like drone defense and stuff. Mm -hmm. I forget what rate he was. I th think he was like some kind of aviation, something electronics, maybe, I don't know, but same thing. Like he was a senior chief that made match chief while he's there and he was a reservist on active orders for like a year yeah. and a half. So there's plenty of, of people like that out there too, that, um, you know, they're willing to, it's not just like for a couple of weeks, it's like you get on active orders, you're there, you're filling a billet. You know, so it's like right. you can do that yeah. too. Um, yep. So yeah, but anyway, thanks, man. I appreciate your time, yeah, and this was sure. uh, this was fun. Hopefully, I didn't talk too much. I probably did, but you know. All right, I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, I had a great time talking to him. It was again like learning learning things I don't already know is uh, always fun to me, especially when it's about like Navy communities and stuff. And then, you know, me, I like discussing the uh, leadership applications, which I think a lot of the Navy doesn't realize um, what's there. Like they don't realize how much they could utilize reservists as a resource to plug manning gaps, to help out with a thing temporarily um, to not like, not just if you already have reservists that are coming to drill in your area, like leveraging, not just what they do in the Navy, but what they do in the civilian world, which is usually different. And a lot of times really interesting and, the type of stuff you might not interact with normally. Um, so it's, there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, and I highly recommend leveraging that. Sorry, my dogs are barking. Um, with that, uh, as always, if you need anything from us, hit us up. Don't give up the ship podcast at gmail.com. You can Facebook message us at don't give up the ship podcast. You can DM us on Instagram, Reddit, or discord at Digas podcast. If you want to support us, you can go to dgutspodcast.com. There's a donate button on the website, or you can go to dgutsapparel.com. Get yourself some sweet Naval Pride and Heritage gear you'll actually wear in public. Uh, and the, the probably the best way, patreon.com slash dgutspodcast. Uh, lots of cool benefits along with all the tiers. Looking to scale that up and do more cool things with it. Uh, I still owe you all a dguts and friends podcast, and that's inbound now that I'm starting to uh, get my life together a little bit. But uh, if you can support us and you're willing to, please do that. If you don't have the disposable income, just like, share, subscribe, and review us on all the platforms for all the things. Tag your friends, share social media posts, or just the podcast on social media. Uh, it all helps, and we really appreciate it. Uh, and with that, that's it. That's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for listening, and don't give up the ship. Hey, shout out to our awesome patrons. We got L Ryan Lebrecht. Hopefully I'm saying that right. We got my man Seth that I just talked to on the podcast. Greg Robbins, Victoria Living Good. Hopefully I said it right that time, Victoria. And William McIver, you guys are amazing. You're enabling us to do a lot of the awesome things that we're, we're waiting on funds to do. And we really, really appreciate your support. If you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash dgutspodcast and become a member today. 
please hit the like button, drop a comment down below on what you thought, and subscribe to the channel.